I'll call them a meeting of order. <clears throat> Just before I read the next resolution, uh, our uh, agenda has one issue with it with our procedures. Uh, item 8.1, snow removal policy. I don't have no problem having it part of the agenda, but uh, according to our uh, procedures, it shouldn't be there. Um, but I wouldn't mind, I don't have a problem with adding it as item for um, information to uh, 4.3 for council to, to look at. If there's any issues or uh, recommendations, then anything of that matter will go before the committee, for the committee to, uh, um, to discuss. Why shouldn't it be the request? Um, the, for the discussion of it, or making yeah. changes to it? Or for the discussion of it. Our procedure bylaw requires for us to uh, let any of that discussion go before the committee prior to any changes. Yeah, it's <clears throat> discussed here and then sent to the committee. Okay. I, I, I must be missing something. I'm sorry. I, I don't know if I'm missing something there, but uh, that's what I thought that it, if anything, it should go to. Uh, committee you can go to committee from here. Yeah, exactly. I guess if the was the intent to review the policy, or or was it to to review it with intent to change, or was it just for council's information? Probably depend on the session we have. <laughs> That's I guess that was the question on should it be an agenda item or not. But yeah, but it can be an agenda item. Because it, it, it can't, like in my opinion, and I could be wrong, like it could be just added as a information for council as part of that uh, delegation, 4.3. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Uh, Mayor. I apologize. I'm, I'm having trouble finding in the bio, in the in the procedures bylaw where we can't discuss a policy or where it goes to committee. I know that's our practice, but I don't see it in here. Maybe so you're... our okay. So <clears throat> if you want to, so what you're saying is that you want to discuss the policy, but if if there's discussion of the policy, if there's going to be any changes. And they would have to go before committee then. Right. The, the process, as I understand it, is we can discuss whether we think there's a need to send it to committee. We can discuss what we think the issues are. And then once we discuss, discuss that, if there's, once we've had a discussion about that, it then goes to committee for the, if there's a discussion, decision that there should be some review of it, whether or not we even change it later, whether there's a decision that we should at least have a review, that the, our discussion frames what the committee would, would discuss. That's my understanding. I could okay. All right. Then uh, I can accept that then. So, uh, but it's not, yeah, there would not be amendments to it from today's. No, no, exactly. <laughs> that's, not, that's, not, that's not on. Okay. Very good. So they resolved that the agenda for the regular meeting of January the 15th, 2019 be adopted <coughs> as uh, amended. I need a mover. Oh, we didn't get to sign that, did we? And a seconder. When Tony. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> it's a little bit different here, so we've just got to be resolved that the minutes of the regular meeting of January the 2nd, 2019 be adopted as circulated. Mover? Councilor Gray. Seconder? Councilor Memorial. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Okay, so we'll go to item four, receptions and delegations. First, we have uh, with us Swan Lake Watershed Conservation District update. <clears throat> Thank you for everybody here. Just introduce yourself if you can, Hi. for those who don't know who we are. I'm Walter Kolesnick, uh, board chair for the Swan Lake Watershed District. Um, Stephanie Reed, manager for the watershed. Don Bobbick, I'm vice chair. Okay. 
first of all, congratulations to all of you guys, the women that got elected. Exciting times. <laughs> so if you spend as much time as mayor as Glenn did, how old will you be? I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to think about it. <laughs> Um, we have a little bit of information for you to share with you. <coughs> we'll make a short presentation if that's okay, and then open it up to questions. <coughs> uh, some of you are quite familiar with the watershed, uh, and some are probably new and maybe haven't uh, met us before. We're, uh, the watershed was formed in 2006 and officially started operating in 2007. Covers an area of 4,234 square kilometers. And our mandate is to create healthy and sustainable watersheds through, through land and water programs and partnerships. How the CD is run, uh, we have uh, four municipalities, Town of Swan River, Municipality of Stone Valley West, Municipality of Mentone of Baldwin, and the Arm of Mountain. We have uh, subdistricts, there's four subdistricts in our watershed, and a total of 20 subdistrict members. Appointments must be a counselor and a ratepayer, or two ratepayers, but never two counselors from each uh, municipality. <coughs> We have an annual general meeting every year, and that comes up in January. And, uh, and this year is 24th of January, so we'll have uh, our annual meeting where we'll elect uh, uh, the chair and vice chair for each subdistrict, and then the main board chair and, and vice chair. Currently, we have uh, a manager, Stephanie, she's with us tonight. A uh, financial administrator, uh, Jennifer Rary. And Eddie Sheo is our technician. And I'll turn it over now to Stephanie. Okay, so we handed out the little pamphlet that has the programs in it. Um, we put this together just so that everyone can kind of have an added glance. Everybody's always asking, what do you guys do? So I handed you guys each one tonight, and I brought some extras. If we can, we'll leave them at the town office with whoever, so that if the public comes in and wants something here, it's available. Um, I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of crap. So everything throughout the whole uh, program listing here, it has a short explanation and then the coding on the side is kind of the funding ratios. So I'm not going to go into it, but you guys have it to keep. So if you want to read through it some more. Um, a few numbers just overall from the year and us at the office. So this past season we completed uh, 15 projects throughout the valley and uh, some we have some big external funding sources that have come up this year which uh, I'm working on right now and putting in force. So um, we have four kind of pots of money that we're putting in for and one of the biggest that stand out against the others is uh, water retention. So we're looking at two sites in the valley for that and uh, water retention meaning like a, a small temporary storage space that <coughs> lowers the water so that it has less impact on the infrastructure downstream and erosion and everything else that comes with that. Um, we have something sort of new, sort of not. The survey equipment that we have on, on board just want to give a recap to everybody that we do have it. It's available. We have Eddie with us right now. He was on a one-year term, um, so he's for sure with us till next October. And uh, both him and I can both do the surveying. So we have a survey service available. It's mentioned in the in the programming as well. And um, with that, I have. I'll pass it around if you guys want to see an example, and if not, I can just leave it here. But just our form, how we, um, like, we do charge a little bit for it. We see it kind of as revenue through him, and these are two examples of what we can prepare. And uh, 
I guess if any of you guys have had serving done <coughs> by bigger companies, you would know that it's a little more expensive. This might be more affordable for a smaller job sort of thing. Uh, on that note, we also purchased a drone this fall. Um, we were able to purchase it with our own local dollars, uh, not cost shared from the province. And uh, so we're also offering that to anybody and everybody within the watershed. Uh, same thing, we have a small fee for it, but it's smaller than the survey stuff. And uh, I don't know if everybody's seen drone stuff, but you can do the pictures and the videos. And we're going to be able to survey a little bit from it. We haven't learned yet, but it is possible. We just got it in the fall, so we haven't had a lot of flying time because the cap is about minus 15, depending on the wind. So I'll maybe leave that here at the office too if you guys want to look at it later. Um, I'm not going to go too far into detail, but a little bit about our budget. So I know a bunch of you have an idea from past, but for whoever's new, uh, we receive our <coughs> core funding from the province and then we have a matching amount from our member municipalities, including the town and then our surrounding three. Um, so for every $3 that the government contributes, uh, the district has to collect a minimum of $1 from, from you, our partnering uh, municipalities. Um, Aside from that, some of our sources of revenue would include, uh, we rent out the boardroom uh, at the office. Um, we don't necessarily accept every group that wants to come in, but people that are reasonable or that maybe have an ongoing commitment, the board makes that decision. Um, we also have storage in the basement. So for example, Sportfish is in the basement. They keep their stuff down there year round. Uh, we have Green Arrow Tech renting an office space from us. We have, uh, we do work with the Swan Valley Crime District. Um, as I mentioned just now, we have the uh, equipment rentals and service, which also includes, um, we have a cedar and some other stuff for actual field work. And then uh, our landowner contributions from projects and new we had the tree program which I'm sure most of you have heard the advertising and stuff and it's been really successful last year we sold um, I shouldn't say we sold because we're selling them at cost so we're not making money on it we're just selling it because we can buy in bulk um, there was nine thousand dollars that went into that and this year so far we've had lots of applications but they're due on the first of February so We'll see what comes of it. We had five species last year. We offered 15 this year, and it'll probably stay at that same mark. Um, now, back to your paperwork. There's a pie chart. Big orange and red and all that. I'm just going <coughs> to point out that this pie chart represents the total dollars that have uh, been spent throughout the district from 2007 when it opened to 2017. So you can see that the province has kicked <coughs> in and we've, we've used uh, two and a bit million, making up 51%. Uh, external, whether it be uh, external to fund our summer students or external to fund projects, um, everything has gone into that pot and that's at 22%, nine. 100,000 and some. Um, municipal, that's your guys' contributions in combination with the other three. Uh, 732,000 at 17%. And then uh, local, so everything that I just kind of listed, sources of revenue um, in combination at 400,000. And land donor contribution, yeah, I mentioned that. So tally this whole thing up, and that's a rough 4.2 mil, uh, million going into the valley, and that's in 10 year span. Um, moving on here, the next thing right, up, right underneath that, the writing total, total dollars spent in each subdistrict. Now I just shortened this one up because this is what we can get right out of our SAGE program. Um, this is total project dollars in the past five years per subdistrict. 
And if you want to know where is the subdistrict, next page is a map. Those color coded are the four that we have in the valley. So those numbers are there 500,000 in Upper Swan Lobster Creek. Uh, that includes um, a couple big projects, so the number is driven a little higher, but they are good projects. That would be your fishway stuff, golf course, baffles, uh, Bertram Dam, a couple of the ones that were bigger money spent. Um, Woody River, Birch River, Roaring River, Fable Creek, and Lower Swan St. Clair Rivers. So, Roaring River is along the Duck Mountains. You can see a lot, just depending where it is in the watershed, there might be more money spent. Uh, so, what are some numbers from this year? A little bit of a recap. So the grand total that was spent uh, all in all with all sorts of the funding was 128,000. Um, Swan Lake Watershed ourselves, our own cash uh, from the budget at 70% because projects are funded for the most part 70, 30, and then some are different as listed in your program. Uh, we spent 91,000. Uh, the landowners' portions, um, both in kind and cash money, at 21000 and some change, but I'm not going to, you guys don't have these in front of you, so. Uh, we had admin fees, we calculated a small admin fee with our projects so that we could have a little amount of money going towards our technician, so it's more of a tech fee. Uh, there was 10000 and then the total that was spent on um, Swan Lake Watershed uh, actual dirt work <coughs> project, so not including your abandoned wall <coughs> ceiling and um, water testing, not including our Hanaway cleanout, and not including environmental education dollars, <coughs> is 102000 So that's like project dirt work. Um, that kind of wraps it up for me. Walter's going to tell okay. you about some changes. There's changes coming down, but before we go into that, I want to just ask Don if you want to make a few comments on the, the town. Or, sure. Okay. First off, I'd like to thank the town for letting me be citizen rep and represent the town of Swan River. Thank you. Uh, just to go back to Upper Swan Lobster Creek area, that's what's the area that the town of Swan River is in. It is, I'm told, the peach area. On your peach map. on your map. On your map. So it starts about the Saskatchewan border, goes just about two bows, maybe a little bit more, 10 feet or 10, 10 miles wide, approximately. In that area, we spent $500,000 in work over the last five years. So the town of Swan River is approximately in the middle of that. So that means $500,000 worth of work has been done to protect the water, which comes near town of Swan River or through town of Swan River. <coughs> With that, in, in an example of that is the city of Brandon is part of the conservation district. They spend, they send $60,000 upstream of them to two conservation districts just to protect their waterways. I'm not telling you to send money somewhere else, but I'm just, to give you an example that they really <coughs> think very highly of the conservation district because of both the water protection that they use river water plus groundwater for their water treatment plants. Um, you may be driving in the areas. One of the things we've started in the areas now is you'll see signs up with our name on a conservation district. These are all projects that we started. If we do a project, we put a sign up. So lots of projects have done prior to years. Nobody knows what to do to see a whole past work and stuff like that. They drive by, they don't know who it is. Right now, we advertise as much as we can. We try to get out there as much as we can and advertise. So, um, if you need and there's any questions that come up from rate payers, whatever, feel free to phone us, drop in, see Stephanie, or give me a call. We'll be helping you. Okay. Stephanie, you want to say something else? Yeah, I just wanted to add that um, the so we did have in our plans to do some rock um, or some riprap, I guess just more or less fixes. I met with Derek in the summer about a few spots on the river um, in locations that were done in the past by the CD where you can see the geotech starting to show and <coughs> things have been bumped either with the ice jams and whatever. So we do have that identified. Um, 
we did want to do it this year. We did not end up getting it done because we, like I mentioned, we're looking at the water retention and we had to use a little bit of money towards our engineering design on our uh, water retention structure. However, we did also identify a site uh, right along the <coughs> park um, that could actually use a full project, uh, like proper sloping and the riprap to match everything else, where it was starting to erode off the bank. So uh, I do have that on our project listing, and it's on a higher priority this year. So um, I've talked to the board about it, and we'll be looking at doing both the fixes and the new project upon your guys' approval. Thank you. Okay. I just wanted to, uh, <clears throat> as some of you know, there's uh, been some changes coming. Provincial government passed a new Water Rights Act, and a new Conservation District Act, and it's going to be called the Watershed District Act. And our name is going to change. It's going to go from Swan Lake Watershed Conservation District to uh, Swan Lake Watershed District. And we're province-wide, we're going from 18 watershed districts to 14. And these watershed districts are going to be based on <coughs> watersheds and not on municipal boundaries. So that's what that was the reason for the change. They want these watersheds to uh, reflect the actual uh, water on the ground and what's happening with it and try to, try to work with uh, local people and, and deal with the quality of water and um, this has been going on for about a year or a year and a half now and everything's going to kick in in uh, the spring of 2020 so as of now we're we're still operating under the the old system but uh, when we start in 2020 we're going to have a little bit of a different structure we'll have the same number of board members uh, appointed by <coughs> uh, the municipalities but we're also going to have a the power as a board to it to appoint two more people uh, locally. Uh, we're going to be funded a little bit differently in the future. As you know, right now we we only have one way to do the funding. That's based on assessment. And what we've done in the past is we pick a year of assessment and attach a mill rate to it, and then that would be your uh, <coughs> contribution to the levy. So starting in 2020, we're going to have the option of uh, using uh, that system or go to a system of percentage, a percentage of the total levy. And the total levy is about $85,000 between all four municipalities. And we have uh, uh, discussed it uh, as a board, and we, uh, we're actually going to be talking about it on the 24th at our annual meeting. So we're hoping that we'll have a good turnout, and I understand that the government's going to be approaching everybody that's involved in the watershed district to approve the changes locally and make a decision whether they want they want to be a part of it. So by the end of March, they're going to ask this municip your municipality, your town, and the other three if you want to be a part of the Swan Lake Watershed District because the new act is coming into effect everybody has to be reappointed and uh, the whole new proposal has to be approved by the <coughs> municipality so that'll be the big uh, thing that has to be done in, uh, before the end of the fiscal year if you uh, decide you don't want to be a part of the watershed district then uh, you you would have uh, one year to give your notice as of now till beginning of 2020. I don't, I don't expect that's going to happen, but that's probably something we should think, think about. We have uh, um, Charlotte coming from Brandon. She's our planner, and she's coming to our meeting on the 24th. And so uh, what she said to me that when we're talking to the municipalities, uh, make it clear that any of you or all of you can come to our meeting on the 24th. It starts at 7.30. Uh, we have, uh, of course, your appointees, <coughs> and uh, we're hoping that uh, uh, we'll get a good cross-section of uh, councillors come to this meeting and get a better understanding of what's really going on, and she wants to explain the whole proposal to you and in detail. 
And then, of course, that evening we're also going to have our election of uh, vice chairman and chairman of each committee and the board uh, elections. Well, that's about all I've got. Do uh, you have any questions on that? Okay, thank you, Walter. Yep. Uh, Go ahead. For, uh, um, I guess I'm the, uh, the town's uh, appointee, council appointee on the uh, watershed, so I'm looking forward to working with you guys. Good. Um, has your board had any discussions about, I know you said 2020, they're going to be reviewing how how we're going to be uh, charges municipalities, but has your board uh, had any discussions for 2019 as far as possibly using the 2016 census as opposed to the 2011 <coughs> census that you guys have been using? You're talking about the assessments? Uh, yes, the, yes, not census, assessments. Uh, we, we're we actually going to have that as uh, one of the topics on, on the agenda for the 24th. Because every year, once a year, we decide what the what the uh, formula is going to be to collect that revenue. Mm -hmm. I, I know it had been brought up in the past, but I just yeah. wanted to make sure it was going to get brought up again. The way, because... the way it's, we did it uh, the last couple of years has been uh, based on the 2012 assessment. And then uh, where are those numbers? We're going to be about three assessments behind soon. So Right. And you see, the interesting thing about all this is when we start in 2020, we will only, if we want to use the assessment system, we'll have to use the current assessment. We can't go back two or three or four years and pick one. The last time we made a change, we decided to grab 2012, and we multiply that times decimal 665, and that came up with our levy per, per municipality. Here's some examples. Uh, the levy for Swan Valley West was 39,000. Minnetonas Bolson was 26,000. Mountain Municipality was 6,600, and the town of Swan River was 13,442. So, if we go to uh, the 2018 assessment and use the assessment system, and to raise the same 86,000, 85,000, Swan Valley West will pay 43,000 instead of 39, Minnesota will pay 29 instead of 26. Mountain will pay 4,500 instead of 66, and Swan River Town will pay 8,100 instead of 13,000. What we're hoping uh, on the 24th as a board is that we'll approve uh, the formula to be adopted for the next year to be the same as this year. So just use the 2012 and use the same numbers, and then when the, the new system kicks in in 2020, then we'll have to make a choice. Councilor Gray, thank you. What would the justification be for using a 2012 assessment? Pardon me? What is the justification for using Because you see, uh, since, since 2008, when we, when we first started using assessment, uh, land assessments have gone up very, very fast. And buildings have not. So when you apply the current land assessment, it becomes uh, very heavily weighted on um, municipalities like Minnetonas Bozeman and Swan Valley West and very little on Swan River and Mountain because their assessments not, have not gone up the same way. Assessments reflect the ability to pay mm -hmm. and so <coughs> it, obviously their ability to pay has gone up and, and their, their cost has not gone up commensurate with that ability to pay. That's not, I, I, I guess I'm a little bit bothered because I find that if, if the rules were reversed and the town's assessment had gone up, nobody would be feeling sorry for us and would be expecting us to pay. So I, it kind of leaves a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth. So I, I hope mm -hmm. the board can look at that again. Well, we're definitely going to look at it. In fact, we have to pass a resolution at every annual meeting. Councilor Gray. I was going to follow up with my discussion because it, it seems to me that what you said is. I want a result, and what we'll do is we'll go backwards and find a question to give us a result. Um, isn't the logic, I, I, I don't know enough about this to be sure, I've done a little bit of reading, but um, I understood that the purpose of the Swan Lake Watershed Conservation District was to ensure conservation of lands based on water. Am I missing something? That's part of it, yeah. yeah. Well, what else is there? Well, we also do uh, well seeding and uh, okay. water quality. So a lot of well seeding and swan Yeah. 
Previous, a lot of well sealed in Swan River, in the town? We did nine just this year. In yeah. Swan River? Uh, in no, the valley. In yeah, no, but not, Swan, like Swan, not in the Swan River, because we haven't had wells for right. 40 years. Okay, so my question is, since the object is to protect land values and land, surely land values is the important factor in determining mm -hmm. what the cost is, isn't it? Or am I missing something? No, that's right. Well, we're not protecting land, we're protecting water quality, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. Water quality and, and the land that flows with it, right? But it's land, it's, it's, most of our work's done on land, you know, for so land owners. Just because it's only one year, it, it's not going to be a huge deal. So in 2020, you said there's a percentage. Is the other proof possible? Tell yeah. me what that means, because I don't understand that exactly. I think I, I think the here what the legislation says, but you tell me what you think that means. What they're saying is that they're gonna, they call it they call it portioning, right? And so what they're going to say is that we want to collect eighty five thousand dollars from the four municipalities. Right. We want to do it uh, in a way that's fair to everybody. Right. So if we go back uh, and we look at the past history, of what we have paid. And if we uh, look at the 85,000 and divide it up, and it'll be in the proportion. <coughs> and once you pick a percentage, if we all agree on a percentage for each municipality, a percentage of that 85,000, for example, if we say that Swan Valley West is going to uh, pay 50% of it, then that's going to be locked in until that whole proposal is re renegotiated, which would be at least five years. So it'll be a negotiation. It'll be municipality sitting down with us and going through it and trying to find common ground through negotiations and, and then pick those numbers and then that will be locked in. Councilor okay. Gray? Councilor Gray doesn't quite have, a, have a bad taste in his mouth as I do about this because he says this is just one year but this has been a couple of years now that we've lobbied to keep going with the uh, <coughs> advancing and assessments because it's protecting those properties that's that, that, that the whole reason why assessment was chosen as at the fund conservation districts was was because you're protecting the land. Um, if we were truly protecting water quality, let the water run. Mm -hmm. But we're protecting land. So to, to say that it's only one year and we'll be okay with, with uh, not going up to the 2018 assessment, I guess we'll have debate amongst council, but I, I've from this, from this council, I think we would definitely want to see us move to the 2018 assessment for 2019. And I guess just one further question on how the uh, uh, port, on the decision whether we're part of the con the new conservation districts. Does that do we have to make the decision before we find out how the new conservation district will be funded, or at or after? I, I guess. Do we say we're in and then we decide is it going to be assessment or percentage or do we decide if it's assessment or percentage and then because I can, I can tell you one thing if, if we're not going to do it fairly I, I can't advocate for us to continue to be in on something no, that isn't going to be the way, fair. I, the way I understand it, this is why I'm, I'm saying to you for you people to be at the meeting on 24th yeah because this is going to be critical Charlotte is going to go through it step by step in detail and the information that I've been given by her is saying that we have to pick the type of formula we're going to use before the end of March because it's going to be incorporated into the proposal okay. which you guys then have to ad adopt okay. and say yes will be a part of it or not going to be part of it. Excellent. Excellent. I, I understood the default. the default position was the assessment, right? Okay. Yeah. You can agree to percentages but if no one agrees to percentages, then it goes by the assessment. Right. Yeah. We'll have to pick. We'll have to pick out first. We'll have to pick the system we like, and then if we can negotiate a percentage, and if we can't negotiate a percentage that we can all agree to, we go back to the assessment. Right. That's and right. the assessment going forward from 2020 Isn't will be important. current assessment, yeah. the latest assessment. Excellent. You won't have the option of going back to 2012 or 2010 or anything. Because it's not fair. <laughs> but nobody could predict, you know, 10 years ago, the land prices were just going to go like this. That's why they chose assessment, because nobody could predict it, but the market, the, that's why you leave it up to the market. The market will decide what and land the, is worth and what and people have the ability you, to pay. And this is not the only area in the province that this has happened. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of areas in the south that they're having the same argument and discussions. Council, do you have a question? 
No, a few comments. That's a good place. So, firstly, I, I want to thank you guys for coming, obviously. But, uh, Steph, Steph has been a big help and her team to our Urban Force Committee. She's brought uh, workers over, equipment over, and that stuff you kept with a dollar sign on. That's that appreciated. <coughs> I'm assuming they don't like this. There's a 5K, uh, help me if I'm wrong in this, guys, a 5K range you can't fly a pro 5K of the airport. Sorry. Five, not, five, not five kilometers. Five here. kilometers of the airport, no drones in the sky. I believe I'm right. It's higher. Seven, 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 seven or something nine. like that. Well, it's five for sure then. <laughs> so I, would, I would encourage you to look into that one. In the regulations, you mean? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Yeah, no no fly zone. Steph, I think what I heard you oh, say. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think I heard you say for every dollar the partners put in, the government matches it with three. I think yeah, you said three, it backwards, one. but that's yeah. fine. Uh, have they picked up, paid their money up? Yep. There been up in front of yeah. that one? The government actually, uh, well, the government, the, our CD program province wide has a budget of $5.3 million, mm -hmm. and that's been static for about the last three or four years, and this government did not reduce it. Good. How many given for funds from the First Nations or the Metis community? Because a lot of this water goes through their land also. Have they been putting uh, up money? We're not allowed to do any work on First Nations because it's federal. But the water that you work on up here goes through their lab. <coughs> that you make cleaner for them, for everybody. But in 2020, starting in 2020, we'll be allowed to work with them. It's in the new... Have they asked the First Nations if they would like to consider making a small donation to the cleaning of the water through their properties? I we will. We are going to meet with them once we, once okay. we get closer to that. I appreciate that. Now help me for all, I'm going to guess this one, and I don't like to guess. I'm going to guess that the town of Swan River's got a heck of a lot more money building all that rip route along the edge of town just over here. Than we put in. You're probably right, Dwayne. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, off the top of my head, I think that project was a hundred and sixty thousand yeah. dollars. Uh, and I'm picking numbers out of the sky here, but I think you probably put in around ninety to yeah. hundred thousand so far. Okay. Thank you. And, and those are just. Yeah. That's, we need to hear that side too. Yeah, I, I saw that the lift station project was eighty. Yeah. I think eighty. With okay. the riprap and everything else, just looking back in at those subdistrict numbers. And we put in how much? The per town? year? Yeah, that year? Uh, 13,000. 13,000, and we got an 80,000 dollar project. Okay. All right, any other further questions or comments? And I think it's more important to uh, point out, just like Stephanie had said earlier, we have to have communication, and our door is always open, so you, you guys have to. If you have something that's on your mind about uh, projects or potential projects or water quality, anything along those lines, you know, we can partner with you. We can partner with other, even the private sector, to do to do projects and get things done. There is some funding that only can be accessed through a conservation district to do it. Municipalities can. Yeah. Well, we, we have a good representative on the yes, uh, <laughs> from uh, council here. Plus, I think that you have a good working relationship with Mr. Poole as well. Yeah, yeah. Councillor White. The sports fish people are happy with all the work that you've done with us and help you've given us. Councillor Morio. We've got a lagoon project coming up there if you want to partner with that. <laughs> a lagoon project. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're looking for partners. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> you get the water in eventually. So. Yeah. Watch okay. it. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bobbick, for representing the town of Swan. Thank you. I'm going to leave these here, those things, examples of the programs. Okay, so we'll move on to 4.2 uh, from Ruth Reimer. It's the Key Color Cottage. I can see the request there for, I guess, more or less information on this. Ruth was supposed to show. I didn't receive any correspondence that okay. she was not going to. So if she chooses, she will come back at, the, at our next meeting. Then. See you guys. Hi. Good night. Thank you. So moving on then to 4.3, Karina Medwood and Pat Yaskew, a storm removal policy. Come forward. Welcome. Thank you. On well, this cold night. It is. A little chilly and brisk. All right, well, I'll let you have the floor and you can bring your issues and then the council will ask any questions or comments. Okay. Uh, well, I'm Karina, if you guys don't know, and this is Pat Yaskew, my lovely neighbor. Um, 
first, thank you for dealing with the issue that I originally communicated. Uh, but we still have some concerns, so that's what we're here for. Uh, I do mention Derek's name quite a bit, nothing personal, it's just he's the one that communicated with me, so you will hear his name a fair bit. <coughs> so we have read the town's official snow removal policy. Oh, before I go any further, it takes me roughly 20 minutes to read through this out of respect for your time. Are we okay with that? or? Do you want us to come back and finish it next meeting? Can you, can you speed up a little bit more than that? I can do my best. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. So, we have read the town's official. Councilor Gray has could, could we oh. make copies of it and then you know, give us the highlights and then we can read it? Does that work? Well, I kind of wouldn't mind going through it really quick, if that's all right. We but get I did a copy of it afterwards then? Yeah, yeah. I did Maybe bring one for you. Yeah. 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 So I'll, I'll read quickly then, and uh, you guys can uh, review afterwards. So we have read the town's official snow removal policy. We failed to understand why the town and council approved a snow removal policy February 3rd, 2015, knowing full well when it did, full well it did not provide solutions for the frequent complaints of citizens, or why the town and council have strongly supported and backed it for almost four years, and why if the town equipment currently being used for snow removal has the ability to clear driveways and pathways to the same quality as the public sidewalks and intersecting streets, it does not do so. What may create a couple extra hours on the front end <coughs> will save countless wasted hours dealing with the frequent complaints on the back end. So everyone should be well aware of my complaint I made January 8th since I emailed it to all of you. My lovely neighbor Pat here has called a few times of her own complaints over the years and has even had Lance out to her place to deal with at least one of them. We fully agree that the property owner should be responsible for clearing any and all snow that Mother Nature sees fit to dump on our property. We also agree that if a property owner wants their driveway or pathway cleared all the way to the public road, then said property owner should be doing it themselves. Where we have a difference of opinion is on who should be responsible for what the town snowplows leave behind, especially when they block an already cleared drive or pathway. That, my dear council, is no longer Mother Nature's doing. That's an intentional act of disregard from one human towards another. Derek Poole's email on January 9th stated, I quote, I must be understood that clearing pathways is not a requirement in our snow removal policy. This is done by our operators as they let the wing down when a clear pathway is noticed, though there is no requirement for them to do so, end quote. In fact, pathways are not mentioned in the snow removal policy, but maybe they should be. I recognize that neither the town or property owners are required to clear a pathway to the road. However, some citizens, such as myself, choose to do so and usually for a valid reason. And to be clear, I am not expecting the town to clear my pathway for me. I do that myself. What I expect from the town is not to backfill it with the snow-packed ice chunks from the road when they're clearing snow. In Derek's email from January 10th, he suggests that if my pathway being clear is of importance to me or my business, then, quote, it would be worth it to not rely on the general taxpayers to provide that important access, end quote. Again, I do not rely on the general taxpayers to clear my pathway. I do that every snowfall myself, and in fact, did it Monday evening, January 7th, before my 8 p.m. yoga class. I do expect that the town employees maintain the clear pathway and not backfill it, which the plow did Tuesday morning, January 8th, when they plowed the road. He then referenced downtown businesses being required to clear snow and ice. This is comparing apples to oranges. Yes, we both have are required to shovel what Mother Nature drops. However, it differs from there because businesses in the business district <coughs> are not dealing with the town plows coming minutes or hours afterwards and backfilling their sidewalks and business fronts with chunks of snow and ice. I am dealing with that. And I am being told that it's all on my property and therefore my responsibility to remove yet again. I work at Ace, I work at Chicken Chef, I've worked at the co-op, I walk to work, I've passed many businesses, I've never once seen the town plow the streets so that it backfills onto the business fronts and then turn around and tell the businesses, that's your property, clear it again. And don't put it on the street, by the way, because we just did that. So 
I am dealing with that very issue, the businesses are not. So there's a very significant difference in my concern here. Derek's response to my inquiry regarding legal risk implied that because the town has a snow removal policy, the town is not liable for any accidents or injuries that occur on town land. As a home and business owner, I'm required to have insurance. Insurance that will cover that if anybody is on my property, falls, injures themselves, I am liable and potentially can be sued. So on town land, if somebody is trying to trek their way through these snow ridges or trying to shovel it out because they have to once again clear their driveway so they can use it or their pathway, where's the liability to the town? Because it is the town's land. And I realize the town likely has insurance, but do we really want to be spending a bunch of dollars on insurance claims if there's a solution up front and avoiding that? Derek mentioned a concern for clearing pathways resulting in a shortage for snow storage. My pathway is usually equivalent to one wide shovel width, which is pretty standard, I'd say, for any other citizen clearing a pathway. On 2nd Street North between Taylor School and the bridge, there's three of us, myself, George Adams, Chucks, and Paul's Funeral Home that clear a pathway to the road. If you're telling me that you can't drop a blade to clear out my pathway when you're doing the road because of storage issues, then I'd have to say there's a significantly more severe problem on our hands. Derek also mentioned that for efficiency in clearing pathways, markers would be required. I can absolutely work with that. I'll even pick some up at work tomorrow. If you tell me what I need, is it just the sticks with the red little circles on it? I will buy them tomorrow and I will put them in. You tell me how wide they need to be, I will put them in, I will pay for them. If it will help the operator see my pathway and maintain it, I will fully fund that. We would also back and support this being written into policy for any and all citizens who wish to have their pathways cleared to the road that they, one, are required to do it themselves, and two, <coughs> If they wish the town to drop a blade and maintain their cleared pathway, then they are required to purchase, install, and maintain all appropriate markers to identify the pathways to the operators. We recognize that not every citizen wishes the shovel to the road, which is why we recommend any markers be at the cost of those citizens who do, and not fall upon the town and therefore the general taxpayers as a whole to cover these expenses. We do not agree or support Derek's absolute statement of, quote, the further this goes, the closer I get to recommending to council that we either instruct operators to strictly do all of the pathways or none at all, end quote. Firstly, such <coughs> absolutes do nothing to improve the situation. If all are added, we will likely come incur additional taxes and costs and likely generate a whole new category of complaints. If we do not do any, you are still going to be dealing with all the complaints of those of us citizens who shovel to the end of the road and then have it backfilled. And that stuff is not easy to shovel out, let me tell you. Secondly, by implementing the suggestions we've already made, we honestly believe we have provided a fair balance between onus on the citizen and onus on the town to work together for a solution. I'm skimming here, so I'm trying to shorten things up. Regarding the snow removal policy, section 10, how snow will be plowed, collector, arterial, and residential streets, and section 20, driveways. It states, quote, snow may be deposited into the driveway since snow accumulated on the plow may be too much for the wing to handle, and therefore the snow has no place to go but into the driveway. The town will not be responsible for plowing snow from any driveway. With the exception if the wing did not operate at all. And that is the discretion of the superintendent of works, end quote. My lovely neighbor Pat here has been told from town staff from each of her complaints the same line I was given, that operators are not required to clear private driveways and any snow on private property is the property owner's responsibility. <coughs> but the fact that you state the exception of clearing a driveway is if the wing did not operate at all, implies that you are to be dropping the blade. 
And if you are to be dropping the wing blade, then why aren't we doing the same due diligence to clear a driveway or a pathway as we do to the intersecting roads and public sidewalks? The equipment is already there and accessible. It's not a special requirement. No one's asking for special treatment and nobody is asking for the town to come out with an additional service, additional staff or additional equipment to specifically clear driveways or sidewalks. The town snow removal and safety citizens, we are both the neighbors of Goody and Morley Hansen. Pat has actually observed for herself parts of what we speak to. In the 2017-18 snow season, Hansen's driveway was plowed in from town equipment clearing the road with large chunks of ice and packed snow. Pat has pictures if you want to see them. The garbage truck with dual wheels barely made it in and out for the garbage pickup. It left behind huge ruts from the tires. Leon and Murray. Leon comes on a daily basis to take Morley out for coffee. Murray comes weekly. Leon couldn't even get her car into the driveway to be able to take Morley out for coffee. Murray lost his mud flaps trying to back his truck through that. If you guys don't know who Morley and Brady Hansen are, they're in their 70s. They have been citizens of this town for most of their life. Morley used to own the butcher shop just by the bridge over there. He has suffered two strokes. He has limited mobility. And without the wonderful courtesy of these people, he would basically be confined to his house. They come every day and once a week to make sure he gets out for coffee into the community and time with his peers. By not coming back and the town telling them that, no, nope, that's private property, you're responsible for it, Leon, who is also in her 70s, was out there trying to lift these heavy snow blocks out of the way so she could get her car in. What kind of quality of life and living are we giving to our citizens and our seniors when we're essentially saying that we have the equipment but private driveways aren't included, so you're on your own. You might be confined to your house for six months of winter, but hey, <laughs> thanks for paying your taxes. We love you. Forget policy and politics for a moment. How would you feel if it was your mother, father, or grandparents having to lift and shovel those chunks of snow left behind by the town's equipment? Or the one confined to their home because it's impossible for them to get out in their yard? How would you feel if you learned that those efforts to remove the snow <coughs> resulted in one or more individuals having a heart attack, dislocating a hip, or in a hospital for any other medical condition brought on by removing that snow? What quality of living does the town and council provide for our seniors who are still living at home? Not to mention if they make the decision to sell because they are no longer able to do the upkeep of what the town creates as a problem for them. That's now going to impact our already strained living accommodations for 55 plus, our personal care homes, and the lodges. The Hansons may not mean anything to any of you, but I'm sure there's got to be at least one or more of you councillors that have a driveway. So my question to you is, have you ever had to deal with that ridge that gets left behind by the snow plows? And if you have, did you go out there and shovel it yourself, or did you make a phone call and get town staff to come clear it for you? And if you've never had to deal with it, is it because the operators know your address and because you are on council, make more due diligence to cleaning your driveway than they do every other citizen's? And Derek, I do happen to know your mom. She lives at the bottom of the hill of Grandpa's. The last time I spoke to her, she was on a waiting list for knee surgery. Would you have given the same response to her if she lived on that property? Would you have told her that the policy says it's public, it's private, we don't go and clear it? Great, I'll just let you address the chair, please, okay? I will do that. We can shift from the compassion and empathy and focus on logic. Time, cost, and resources were often mentioned and referenced in my communications with my personal issue and even the snow removal policy states in section 20 driveways, quote, 
One of the most frequent and most irritable problems in removal of snow from the public streets is the snow deposited in driveways during plowing operations, end quote. So here's how my mind works. Time and labor dollars. First, how much accumulative time is spent handling complaints regarding plowed in driveways and or pathways? From the phone calls, the in-person complaints, the emails, the time to inspect and check the sites, time and equipment to return to the site and clear to completion and resolution of the complaint. Are we talking minutes or hours? <coughs> Because based on my example, time to read the email, discuss the concern or issue with one or more staff and council, Derek to attend the site and investigate. My neighbor said he was the parked there for quite a while and eventually got out for a couple minutes. Time to render a decision, arrange staff and equipment to come back and clear my pathway. The clearing alone took 20 minutes. I was home and I watched it. Time to render a decision, arrange staff and equipment to come back and clear my pathway. Uh, email response from Derek, making the decision, the course of action, reading my follow-up email, and a second lengthy email response from Derek citing policy and procedure. We're looking at a good 45 minutes to an hour for one complaint to be dealt with in completion. Now multiply that by every single complaint you get. We're talking hours. I work at ACE, there's 12 employees. Five live outside of town, the seven that live in town, two rent and five are directly impacted by the town's snow removal policy. Of those five, four have at some point complained to the town regarding snow removal blocking their driveway or pathway. That's an 80% complaint rate. It's not a good stat. Second, how much additional time and effort is required by a town employee to lower a blade and maintain any cleared driveway and or pathway during the course of their regular job duties. Keep in mind, I did not say all, I specifically said any cleared pathways. Driveways are already included in your snow removal policy. Probably seconds or minutes. For courtesy of a little math, I obviously don't have concrete numbers, I'm not on that side of the fence. An average of one minute to drop that blade and clear an access way. In the amount of time it took to deal with one complaint, an operator could do a quality job clearing 45 to 60 access ways, be it pathway or driveway. That is potentially 45 to 60 citizens who won't likely be calling in with a complaint. A little, what, maybe one to two hours on the front end, increased time on a route to do it properly and with a quality precision, and you're saving how many countless hours on the back end? Because for every minute somebody is dealing with one of those complaints, they're not doing their daily job requirements. So that's potentially adding on overtime and or a backlog of work. So there's more tax dollars. Now compare the two, and not only are you likely to find you'll potentially save time, labor dollars, and resources, you will likely be handling fewer complaints. That in itself can improve staff morale in any business or industry, and it may even result in better relations and a more positive opinion towards our town and councillors from the general taxpayers. The one thing I heard the most when I was out campaigning door to door was the crappy conditions of our roads and sidewalks. Winter conditions were the biggest complaint, especially amongst the seniors. Some of you campaign specifically on improving the quality of life and resources for the seniors. Pretty much every one of you here campaign on some level of improving the quality of life for any and all citizens in this town. So how is that snow removal policy meeting those mandates? Here's an opportunity. By taking a look at that snow removal policy, factoring in some changes, some updates, some improvements, you have the opportunity to do that. Having people being able, for those, I read your policy. One side in most streets doesn't have a sidewalk and it's for the purpose of storage of snow. I always wondered why, now I know. Okay, great. But what about if there's houses on that side without the sidewalk? If those people shovel a pathway out to the roads, 
How else do they get to the road? How else do they get to a safe walking path? And then if your plow comes by and now fills in that with a great big ridge of big, heavy, packed snow and ice, once again, how do they get <coughs> out? How do they get to a safe place to be able to walk through the town, to get from their home to the downtown or anywhere else they're looking to go? Great on up that to get you to... Yes, I am almost done. <laughs> We're not here to ask or expect the town to clear all residential pathways. That's an unrealistic expectation. However, for those citizens who choose to make the effort to shovel out the driveway and or pathways to the public road, yes, we are asking and saying that yes, the town should be working with these citizens, not against them. Drop the blade, maintain the driveways and entrances and already cleared pathways. And to be clear, our grievance is not with the operators themselves. They are doing their jobs as per orders. Our grievance is with the policy itself and those who have the authority and ability to change it. In summary and to recap, our concerns and suggestions are one, we believe residential pathways should be added to the snow removal policy and we believe we have offered a fair and balanced, fair balance between meeting the public's wants with minimal impact to the existing procedures. Two, driveways. As per the existing policy, a blade should be dropped and done so with the same due diligence applied to the driveways as intersecting roadways and public sidewalks. We're asking for an improvement in quality of workmanship. Three, by implementing pathways and improving quality of workmanship and clearing of the driveways, the number of complaints should drop off significantly, a reduction in the amount of time and labor <coughs> and resources wasted on handling frequent complaints, an improvement in staff morale due to fewer citizens complaining, and last but not least, it may result in better relations and more positive opinions towards town staff and council. Okay, thank you, and thank you for that uh, uh, work there, that submission. And I guess if council has any questions, uh, I'll open <coughs> Go ahead, council. Like, Firstly, I appreciate that you're uh, advocating for people who may need lots of help, and uh, that's significant, and I appreciate that. And not to take away from the importance of it, like I sometimes thought being a counselor, that was a disadvantage because my ridge was often higher than my neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> I, we have to have some fun about this. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Okay, we'll have Councilor Gloria. I guess I sit on the uh, transportation committee that we should, uh, I guess, table to take a look at Mr. Councilor Moore as chairman, but I guess we'll have that on uh, snow removal on our next uh, committee meeting to look over the finer details and see if we can come to some sort of uh, some sort of change or some sort of a uh, way forward on this. So, uh, without looking at it more more in depth, uh, I, I appreciate everything you had to say and it's you made a lot of valid points, so I think we'll, uh, we'll have some good discussion when it comes time to see how we can actually uh, uh, revise our, our policy if that's the route we choose to go. Um, I would, if you can, get the copy of that maybe to Mr. Yep. Poole. He can forward that to uh, the committee and the rest of the council. I, guess, I can well. email so it too if you like. <coughs> we'll have a copy of everything. If that's Thanks. everything, then uh, thank you very much for coming out tonight. Thank you, and we will eagerly await some feedback on that. I actually just have one question. My financial report that I have to put in, who do I have to see about that? Because I'm you not sure. Speak with, uh, okay. Right yeah. Your expenses. I can go yes. that. Because I'm not sure if I filled the paperwork out properly, so I'll need to double check that. Okay. And thank you. <coughs> okay, so moving on to 4.4. Uh, uh, we have resolved that the public hearing for Variation Order 5, 2018 be open. Recall to order at 8.30 p.m. I need a mover. Mm -hmm. Councilor Dorian, seconder, Councilor Friesen. All or discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, so here we have the uh, information on the, well, this is something that's coming back again. Uh, you see the shared notes and information from the fire chief as well as uh, uh, what we were originally talking about. So I think it kind of 
pretty much all covers uh, the questions that were originally asked. Uh, Councillor Doherty. Um, I guess since the applicants aren't here to ask, but I'll, I'll ask Mr. Poole in case he may have heard. Did he say why he wanted to have a <coughs> one foot seven setback rather than build right on the property line? No, he just he had plans for his addition, and the limits took him to one one foot seven inches away from the. The, the limits, as far as like, what he planned to add. Oh, okay, but there was no. So did, I guess did he, limits as far as the design of his building wouldn't allow him to go any further, or or it was just that maybe just an arbitrary number, or I, I, w I wish he was kind of here to yeah. but uh, from I guess he has his, the opportunity to be here. Yeah, I can't speak for him, but uh, he had his plan and it included a one foot seven inch space. Council so, the one A. I don't know. I'm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Council. Yeah, actually, I have one more question. On your recommendation, you said should Council choose to uh, choose to uh, accept this variance to with the condition of having a fence. Now, are we when we when we accept a variation, do we not have to accept the variance as it's applied for? Or are we allowed to put conditions on it, or does that only? Or because I would have thought we you could only put conditions on things that like when people apply for conditional use. Or can you when when you when you do a variation can we can we say because we're it's not with the yeah okay okay any other discussion on that councilor Gray um, and I read when I read your response about the uh, adjustments and about why what the rationale was you indicated that the reason as I recall for there not being a problem. If you had, you know, if you were against the wall, it was because of abutments, which would be true if there were two. But the, <coughs> I read our planning bylaw, it doesn't actually require an abutment. It just says either on the line or four feet. Am that's I just right. reading it? No, that's right. Okay. So the abutment is really just if that occurs. But is there any reason why? why I mean, I'm still trying to wrestle with the idea of why we allow people to build on the property line if there's no abutment, which apparently we do. But we would require a variation if we were a foot seven inside, because surely the problems are the same, or in fact worse, if you build right on the property line. There actually is no place for the snow to go but the other people's property. If, if you were to build, say we allowed this 1.7 1, 1. here, and somebody built a building on the next one right on the property line, now you only have a, now you only have a foot seven inches. No, what I'm asking is different. What I'm asking is this. Um, I'm trying to understand the policy reason. There must be have been a policy reason for saying you could build on the property line. Mm -hmm. Everybody can build on their property line. Yeah, apparently. In commercial central. In commercial yeah. central, yeah. yes. Or you can build four feet away, mm -hmm. but you can't build in between. And I'm trying to figure out what the rationale for that is. It doesn't make sense to me because anything's if you if you're too small, it's just going to be a garbage collector in there. That you can't do proper maintenance in there. A child was stuck in one on the news two nights ago. They had to break down the wall. And get them off. Okay. So let, let's say somebody built on the property line and we a lot of variance to allow somebody to build six inches from the property line. Now you only have a six inch gap, right? You can't, you can't do any maintenance there. That's so the, that's why the four feet. Would be why is required. that a problem? I, I'm not, I, look, the, there has to be a logical, rational reason for it. And, and that may have been what people were thinking, but that's not, if somebody builds a wall that's not able to be repaired except from the inside that's just plain stupid but that's not our problem that's their problem i guess now, I now if there's damn if there are other <coughs> issues, I, I, I see the garbage and snow i suppose um although um i think the likelihood of the out building on their parking lot on the wall right on the line is remote um, and so i don't see that's a, a risk in this particular case but it just seems to me that there's an, an an anomaly in our bylaw, and that's what I'm more concerned with. I guess a, a reason would be is is why you would put a four something four foot away from the property line is to 
to gain access. Oh, right. And and just the you know what I mean? Like that 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 has to be the reason is for proper access. If there is going to be access, it better be proper. Right? I, I have no qualms about us saying I'll go to Justin and I want to say it has to be four feet back or it has to be abutted. I, I that would make sense to me. What doesn't make sense to me is a bylaw that says it can be on the property line or it can be four feet. Nowhere in between. But nowhere in between. And it doesn't have to be about if, if you said it has to be about it, fair enough. That that actually would make sense to me. The so, bylaw doesn't make sense. So what what is what is the difference between being on the property line and abutted? Abutted means that the other building, there's another building next to it as well. Right. So you have uh, you have a party wall at another party party wall. So that makes sense to me. But not, but one of those buildings had to be there first. No, not necessarily. Right, but but not in every case are abutted buildings. Down that street, you'll see any number of buildings were built at different times, and they are all have party wall agreements. Exactly, they were built at different times, correct? Right. Right. So one of them had to build on the property line. Right. Yeah. So now, if you had, if you had, the first building built on the property line, and now we pass a variance to allow the second building. He doesn't want to build on the property. He doesn't want to abut. He wants to be six inches away. Now we we. The, our, our bylaws <coughs> set up so that the first guy who built his, it, it was contingent for him to gain access to hit to, to repair his wall. It was either an abutment or there's four feet there. I, I don't understand that because because the reality is he has no access. If you built on the property line, you have no access to repair your wall. You're not entitled to go on somebody else's property to repair your wall. That's not a wall. That's not a lawful entrance. And so, like I said, I just think there's an anomaly. That's yeah. that's my problem with it. It was we created an anomaly that doesn't make sense, and we're now, in some ways, penalizing somebody because of our inaccuracy in our bylaw. Um, that's my problem, and and I, I and I. I Frustrated that he's not here because I, I I would certainly like to know what his plan is because because the elk raised legitimate concerns. His snow is going to go on their property. What are we, what is he doing about that? Not necessarily. Not if the contractor is told to haul it away. All the elks have to do is say, "Don't put snow on my property." Right? Well, no. If if he's a foot away from the property, he he's, he's up against TD property. From the bank property. Oh, he's not on. But it's the elks that own that <coughs> property. The elks own the property to the east, where all the like towards the back way. I, I was under the impression that the elks own the TD park, yes. park, TD parking lot, the chicken chef parking lot. Okay, then that, that's okay. I was and they rent and they rent it for mm -hmm. okay. Get Thank you. income from them, but and my point is that that if you're a foot away or if you're on the property line. The snow on the roof is going somewhere, and it's not going. In my experience, water doesn't run up hill. So I expect it's going on to the other property. And so, my question is, how how is he planning to make sure? Because their their concern is legitimate. You don't get to dump snow on somebody else's property. So my question is, how is he? What is he doing to make sure that their interests are being protected? That's what the issue is. For me. And if he can't, if he hasn't done that, then why would we approve it? We, we can't answer that because he's not here right Thank now. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Councilor Uh Another question I got here, and it, it might be one of the reasons why, and I couldn't find it, is that when a property is abutted up against their property line, I don't know if there's a clause in the building bylaw that stipulates that that wall needs to be non-combustible or fire retardant. It does. It does. It does. So that's why it was there. If it's four feet back, <coughs> then it can be a regular combustible wall. Right. Anything, but it's not addressing anything in between. So like at the one foot seven inch, if you have a, a combustible wall, it's a pretty much like a, a hazard to the- Absolutely. We would right. never so, that, would we? So, so that's be like, well, if you're gonna be in here, and that the, this is an approval, um, if you're within that four feet, you need the variance to say that you have to have a non-combustible material 
wall. And that might be why is that if you're up against the property line, the building code says you have to have a non-combustible wall. If you're four feet, it says you don't. But it's in the Neverland in between that's well, made. I think we're giving a variation. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Go ahead. I think we're giving a variation. Okay, it, it has to comply with the same rules as being on the property line. B, it has to meet the fire chief's concern. And C, it has to, it has to, before we can issue it, it has to provide some process which addresses the health concern. Otherwise, why would we agree? It doesn't make sense. Those are the three, those would be the three conditions for me. So I, I don't know if you I just want to make, be clear because I'm not. Uh, <laughs> you should be. <laughs> What snow from this property is going to go on the Elks parking lot? Oh, oh from, from the roof, from, from roof. wherever. I mean, like if the, if the peak was north south, the snow from the north face would slide into the Elks property. If the peaks was east west, it wouldn't be an issue because it would slide on his own property. Right. But the so building, the, the snow existing, from the roof is what we're worried about. Oh, I think so. Or, or, or however it's going to be. I mean, anything that's going to go from his property onto the adjoining property is a nuisance and he has to show us how he's going to abate the nuisance. I, I, maybe there will be none. I mean, the light snow here, maybe there'll be none, but, you know, I think the snow from the roof goes more than a foot away from the wall. All right, well, if that's all we have right now, we'll have a resolution on it uh, later on, so um, if there's any other Discussion. We'll move on then. Uh, be it resolved at the public hearing for variation <coughs> order 5, 2018, be closed. 845. A mover, Councillor Delorier, seconder, Councillor Morio. I keep wanting to write them all down. <laughs> okay, so we're moving on. Uh, 7.1, Superintendent of Works. Resolved that the Superintendent of Works report be received. Mover. Councillor Gray, seconder. Councillor Lintoni. Discussion, questions to, I guess we can say, Mr. Poole. <coughs> Councillor Morio. Uh, in the engineering section, it uh, says deal with <coughs> complaints. Do we, what kind of complaints are we dealing with there? Expect to spend some time on the, on the delegation here tonight. And just general, like our general complaints, we don't, we aren't complaint free, so there's sidewalk complaints out there, there's road complaints, but we do follow our policy and... So the regular complaints that we normally get, not, yeah. nothing out of the ordinary. Nothing out of the ordinary, no. Councillor White. Two questions, how many complaints would you get about people's driveways, like my driveway with a big bridge in it, or people who have businesses with the ridge? To be honest with you, I think we've had two so far this winter and we the girls may have most likely had way more because they just explain the policy and the rules to the people mm -hmm. and they don't like it and they they never get to me but the ones who refuse to take that answer get to me and uh i've had very little but the girls i'm sure have had much more council freeze would you like to tell council about hansen's driveway because we had this last year and it's their driveway, really, that's the issue, not the snow. I don't want to say anything here. But I guess I can inform council on, I don't know if you want to do that right now. Or <coughs> oh, yeah, yeah, but uh, well, if you want right now, I guess if that's, uh, well. No, it doesn't matter. You can do that. I, to, I guess, to be honest, uh, like there, there, was, there was nothing there. I, I don't know how. I guess, I don't know what, what you mean by it's their driveway. Well, it had something to do with it not being of the same oh, entrance okay. level as the... Oh, I, well, I, yeah, I guess they they pack it up. We cut it down. There's wood there, right? So because they don't clean up their driveway. Oh, so the wing is cutting. And leaving a... And leaving, like we're cleaning, they are not leaving a massive ridge. Um, was that it, Councillor Friesen? That's okay, Councillor White and Councillor Moore. How are you making out with, with the fault? 
They're fixed. Fixed? Yeah, they get fixed. Today. Thank you. Council Morning. Um, and you see a report you got uh, with the recycling with the lions. What was the issue there? That uh, I know my ears were ringing on recycling this week. So. Uh, the official statement from the lions was their the the volume at Christmas caused them to fall behind. I've got, I, 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 I personally witnessed garbage not being, or not garbage, recycling not getting picked up last week and stuff like that. And we're well beyond. <coughs> yep. Uh, we've, we've discussed that with them, but that's the only, that's the official word that they're giving us. I, I have nothing, I, I have nothing more, I guess. Okay. Council Wendell Morning. Council Morning. Uh, cemetery and Colin Berry of inquiries, what is that? looking like or what were the inquiries with that uh most likely just the time spent uh mostly with one family just me they're, they're asking for uh custom drawings on their columbarium plate and we have to work with our engraver and with the family to make sure it's just regular process it's just very tedious but uh i'm just explaining the council that there's a lot there's time a lot of time being taken uh, making sure that everybody's happy and that's what we spend our time doing. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? Carried. Resolved that the management meeting minutes for the, sorry, resolved that the management minutes be received. A mover? All right, good. So thank you. <laughs> be resolved that the handyman report for December 2018 be received. Mover, Councilor Dory, seconder, Councilor Friesen. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolved that the management minutes be received. Mover, Johnny, or Councilman Tony, second by Councilor White. Discussion. Yeah, I had a, a question on Ken here. It says he completed old bylaw scanning. So all of our old bylaws, <coughs> like all of the town bylaws that we have on the books are scanned in digital now? Ken completed it, yeah. So how will we be able to get those, now that they're electronic, can we get them online so that anybody can see any bylaw we have? Yeah. Okay, excellent. Are, are we posting the, the ones that are no longer valid? Just, we're just posting the ones that are valid. Well, anything that's been passed by council is, is valid, like if for the past hundred years. Like Correct. unless it's, unless it's been rescinded, it's still a valid bylaw. Yeah, we have bylaws that are still like enactable. I guess you call it from the thirty twenties. Enacted. Yes. Enacted. And then there's obviously ones that have been repealed. Right. Yeah. We're just posting the ones that are act, that are act, active, active bylaws. bylaws. Yes. Okay. Active bylaws. <laughs> we do you have a I'm just thinking because there's, I mean, there's all kinds of, for instance, there's a procedure bylaw every year and you go, <laughs> yeah. okay, we're not doing a hundred procedure no. bylaws. No. Yeah. Well, only the yeah. active they, ones. They yes. would be updated as yes. a change. Yes. 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 But I mean, if, if we have a bylaw from the 60s that's still active, it should be on there. It never, yeah. until you asked your question, yeah. it never occurred to me we would make doing the others and I was just scared. Yeah. Any further discussion? Favor, it's carried. Okay. Moving on to uh, the, the topic of the snow removal policy, seven point three. So given the press meeting should be referred to committee. I'll move that it be referred to committee. Okay, be referred to the committee. Just gotta double check and make sure I'm on the high side. We gotta find my place here. <coughs> <coughs> okay, here we are. So, um, whereas Section 365 2 of the Municipal Act provides that Council may in any year designate the immediately preceding year or any earlier year as the year for which properties, the taxes in respect of 
are, which are in arrears for that year must be offered for sale by auction to recover the tax arrears and costs. Be resolved that the designated year for which properties in arrears be offered for sale by auction be 2018, meaning all properties with outstanding taxes from the year 2017 and prior. And be it further be further resolved that in accordance with section 363, one of the municipal act, costs shall be actual costs incurred for each parcel listed for the 2019 tax sale plus an administration fee of $50 as set forth in the Manitoba Regulation 5097 and be it further resolved that the 2019 tax sale be held September the 11th, 2019 at 2 p.m. in the Town of Swan River Council Chambers and the tax service be hired to manage the tax sale for the town during the fiscal year 2019. Mover, Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion. All in favor? Carried. <clears throat> Resolve that 2019 building inspector consulting agreement be received and further be resolved that the CAO shall be authorized to sign the agreement. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by. Councilor Morio, discussion. Councilor Morio. Uh, just confirming, uh, Mr. Poole, that this is this. Everything's the same. Just the dates are, have changed, and it's a renewal <coughs> date. Current agreement. Uh, the dates have changed, and uh, I did increase the price from two fifty to two sixty, two dollars and sixty cents per capita, which increased it by thirty one dollars per month. <coughs> and the, uh, I guess the wage. Uh, from 18, I think it was 1832 to 1835 per month, basically the, the point of that being uh, I did not want to keep the building inspector's fees, I know we've been caught in this in the past, uh, stagnant for a long time and then hit a, a huge increase, so I did increase them a few percent to reflect that. So were they, was that percent the similar I guess it was to a negotiated percent? Between them. So it was a negotiated. It wasn't similar to what we negotiated or applied to the rest of the management team. It is similar, uh, but it's where we ended up. Is that higher? It's not higher. higher. It is. It's four percent in one case and three point two in another. Uh, that could be wrong. We did. Uh, I guess the one point five <laughs> plus the two point five. <coughs> Discussion? Uh, Councilor Gray. No. For, for, not for this one, but for the next one, can you just send it to lawyers to have it drafted? It, it sends me just seeing it firstly. Um, and secondly, um, <coughs> things, since it says in here, just I, I point this out, you, you may want to consider it. It says that his duties are as defined in his job description, right? Pardon me, where? Sorry. It says that his duties, duties of the individual, okay. <coughs> perform the duties of the individual find outlined in the job description. Right. right? The problem is that later in the agreement, you say that this agreement is the complete agreement. It should be attend attend attended as a part of the agreement right. if in fact you intend to rely upon it. That's sort of the first thing, but the structure of the agreement is no, but I would have done it. <laughs> it's all good. Just, but the one change I would make for sure is to append the, the job description. Right. Otherwise I, I guess we know that uh <coughs> Yeah, it's gonna be fine. We do have a temp, or at least we're wanting a template of an employment agreement for all employees coming, and that just hasn't been done yet. I know that we want that from our lawyers in Winnipeg. So, in order to get Ron's going, I did use what's existing. And if, and if our uh, council.
council here in the town also can provide assistance on that event. Yeah. Okay. We should lean on, on them, right? Yeah. Okay. okay, further discussion? So, um, so then, Councilor Morio. Can we get this agreement like sent to legal counsel and done up before we approve it? Or is, like, yeah. or is, or is there a time of the essence on this to get it? Well, oh, February 1st. February 1st. So, there's time. Well, well, well no, there is. No. I think just for a look, try to work. If we pay them, we're going to do the work. We're good for the next year. And this agreement is identical to the ones in the previous years. We, like, let's be honest, we've had issues with Ron. They've been handled well. We've had, you know, Ron's been excellent. Ron, Ron is happy with it. We're happy with it. I guess. Uh, yeah. No, I just we're exists. dealing with that process of the standard agreements. It's like we need yeah. to yeah, change that, it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that future we, we definitely okay. have to move towards that. Yes. Okay. All right. Further discussion. All in favor? It's carried. <laughs> okay, council reports. Councillor Antoni. You had a long list, so I thought I could look <laughs> It's not really that long. Um, sometimes I can't read my own writing. Um, <laughs> uh, just going back into. Um, snow removal that there was a request for the Chamber of Commerce parking or a lot and we're hoping that that's still something that might be ongoing and if it is any time would be great I'm not sure if it has been done lately or I don't even done them for that one time that was a I, I think that may have been the only time that it was looked at I don't know that for sure though but just in the if it could be done at some point though. oh yeah I took that as a single one-off request for Christmas time oh okay so I guess that was the request that if that's a possibility for the chamber office to have snow removal through once periodically throughout the winter would be can we get it in writing a request in writing from the Chamber of Commerce sure um, that attended a few other meetings I uh, had a great meeting with uh, Mr. Ganita the other day in regards to the CDC and um, um, uh, RISE and that whole umbrella. We're looking at presenting a proposal. Moving forward, looking at how the, um, the CDC and RISE can work to develop a better granting policy and then proposal. So that was a, uh, that's a long conversation and a lot of a lot of work to go into that, but very productive and moving forward. Hopefully, that we'll see some changes or at least a proposal for good changes with that. Um, had a, a conversations in regards to the airport commission as well and getting all that ready with Mr. Ganita, which well, those conversations are very interesting. And the man has a wealth of knowledge that I don't think I'm ever going to be able to tap all of it, but I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, had conversations with various ratepayers in regards to snow issues and other issues as a whole. Um, other than that, I think that's my my report for today. Okay. Oh, thank you. It's a little light. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was expecting a lot more. No, I'm just kidding. Councilor Morio. Um, only a couple meetings uh, this period. Uh, we had a protective services meeting uh, where we discussed the uh, RMA Bloomington agreement, and that's on the agenda, so um, we'll leave it for there. Um, just had a general government and finance uh, meeting where we're reviewing a procurement policy that we, or a bylaw um, that we'll bring forward for the uh, council to see um, eventually. And <coughs> just answering a lot of repair questions regarding uh, some snow clearing and recycling um, as of recently. So, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Friesen. Um, <coughs> <coughs> community Sick Care meeting this week. Um, they are a very active, active group in our community. I didn't know what GC, GGC meant. Does anybody know what that is? 
Guiding Good Choices, and PPP is Positive Parenting Program. Um, they have these uh, once a month and invite people who are having issues with possibly their kids, and it's, it's uh, really quite positive. And I think I told you last time <clears throat> that there was 410 kids got uh, gifts through this program at Christmas time. Also, I don't know if I mentioned the Elks Hall supper that was held at Christmas time, put on by two ladies, uh, one of them being Billy Warenich, and she has not, cannot say enough good stuff about our community as such. She said, the generosity is overwhelming. They receive uh, <coughs> monetary donations. Uh, they receive food from people. They fed over 100 people that afternoon, both young and old. And uh, she just wanted it out there that how much they appreciated all the support. Um, our Communities in Bloom is already talking about spring. I'm wondering, uh, do you need a written request from us to ask for a registration to be paid for? <clears throat> it's $400, and um, that way we get the judges to come up. We've always done them. So I'll get a letter and submit it. Do we need a letter? Well, we haven't in the past. I've just asked. I guess if, if, if we, we've always done, I don't know if we necessarily need you, we can add it as a, as a budget item for that. Or okay. Or in that. I also need to talk to Derek in regards to uh, our budget for flowers at the cemetery and in town. That amount you sent me. Wow. Is Was that for last year? Do you know? Yeah, Corey Price. That's it, thanks. Okay, Councilor Green, I'll ask the question. Aren't you moving, aren't you asking for the $400? Yes. Are you moving a resolution now, second that resolution? Oh, wow, oh, okay. No, no, <laughs> is that what it is? Okay. It's $400. It's $400, yeah. Okay. That so gets us evaluated, that gets the judges to put it. you want to write a resolution and then? Uh, I have no paper. It doesn't have to be tonight. I can do it next time. Yeah. Thanks, Lynn. And, uh, also, Gloria. Um, not too much to report. Just want to make a comment on uh, on the upcoming budget process. And I know in years past, we've given the administration a number, and often it was <coughs> a goose egg. And I know it's not going to be a goose egg this year. Or, you know, I, can, I guess in my opinion, I, taxes will probably be going up this year. How how much they will be going up is hard to say. And I know sometimes administration like when they gave us a number, when we gave them a number to work for that what we we're comfortable with. I, I'm hesitant to do that this year because there's a lot of moving parts, but I think administration should keep in mind who got elected this last this last uh, go round and what our proclivities were towards the budget in previous years, meaning we know it's gonna go up, but don't bring us something with a 10% increase or something ridiculous. So so I, 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 I'm not, I know last year I gave a number, I'm not going to this year that of what I was expecting the budget to look like. I, I'm not going to this year because there's too many moving parts. But just know who you're dealing with at this table and bring something reasonable. It, it'll make the process go that much quicker. So, <coughs> that's, it. that's it for me. Okay, thank you, Council White. I just uh, want to reiterate with uh, G4 and three councillors from this table met with. Uh, to the doctor, Dr. Fine Burnside and Danny in December the 18th. And the bottom line is they ran out of space in the primary care clinic and as a consequence of that meeting, they brought it to our attention that it can be really difficult to recruit uh, surgeons, anesthetists, <coughs> people who want to do the residencies here or study here, there's no place to put them, people who want to move here and perhaps practice here. So it's a significant issue. And uh, what we've asked for that, we've asked all the G4 representatives who are present to uh, go back to the respective councils, bring it to their attention, and start to think about solutions for that. Uh, we also have Dr. Kazakoff, who <coughs> signed, sealed, and delivered, paid money out of the foundation monies, I believe, to uh, who will be coming here within the year. 
uh, doctors uh, and Danny and Burnside have agreed to go to Winnipeg to meet with uh, the Minister of Health when that date has happened. Uh, His Worship has volunteered to start that process. And they brought it to our attention that we have 8,000 patients here right now in that clinic, and there are 16,000 customers waiting to be, uh, well, 8,000 of the 16 are already in the clinic. So from an economic <coughs> perspective, that's a significant thing. We have 8,000 people, probably had 8,000 before, who knows, but we're certainly going to be attracting more, and uh, that certainly helps us. The concern is who pays for the feasibility study, who's going to pay for what is built, they go up, go down, and, and obviously some research is done by Lance and his worship specifically. And I, I've said this so many times, each doctor brings in roughly $800,000 per year to the community. So we, I think it's going to action. So the actions are, we've assigned actions, and uh, I've, I've got three or four to do. I've talked to the chief, uh, Elvin Zaster, he said he would talk. I've got an arranged a meeting with the Prairie Mountain Health on the 23rd of this month and I've talked to the MLA. The doctors are going to go back and talk to all their peers and say, how do you think we can solve this? We suggested working longer hours, working Saturday and Sundays. There are other options that are in there too that might have worked. And the G4 counselors have been requested to go back. And uh, the individual who is one of the landowners nearby has been uh, broached and uh, has been uh, susceptible to talking about the buy selling place. And Mayor Jacobson is going to be meeting with the Hospital Foundation tomorrow night, I believe. And that will be on this topic, and he has agreed to write a letter to Minister Friesen, the health minister, and he has also agreed to meet with Chief Janai from Sapatuea. So uh, things are happening, it's just uh, how fruitful they become. I had another meeting the other night with uh, two and three of the local dentists, and they squeaked hard about the, uh, the possibility of dental assistant programs offered by UCN here. It fell through the loops, hoops, the holes, the cracks last year. I met with the chair of UCN uh, very recently. He says it's back on the table. Council uh, White, uh, we're going to try and make it happen. Then Phil and I met uh, a couple times. We talked about uh, <coughs> the, uh, citizens of the year, and, and with the nudging of the mayor, uh, we've formulated a process. And I, I suspect <coughs> my, my learned companion to my left was part of that process. So Phil has been uh, has met uh, or is meeting with Sue K. Markle. I met with uh, Stacy Grindle, and we've talked about how that process would look. And at the bottom line, it's a the town of Swanson is soliciting a suggestion for citizen of the year. We've made uh, applications to the chamber, and they put that out to all their all the people. Apparently, I, I quote my learned friend in the second to my right, we put the cart before the horse, but that's what I am. And uh, the advertisement's gone out. So what the award is going to do? It's going to acknowledge the citizen of the year. The criteria will be somebody who has significantly contributed to the community. That significance is going to be at least discussed, discussed by the four individuals. It could be religious, it could be political, I guess it would be political. It could be religious, it could be community, it could be whatever. I, I, he would have kicked me if he could have by the chair. And the committee is going to be Kmart, <coughs> uh, representing the senior Stacy Grindle, myself, and Phil. There's a deadline with the date of February of the year <coughs> process. The award will be a framed certificate for a maximum of $100 because it will be the possibility of two. And if there's two, that'd be 50, that's $100. It's going to be presented in the spring of the year annually. And the winners at the moment, Stacy Grindle thinks that we can put them as, uh, put a car in, in float in the parade and put citizens of the year, tell us why there citizens of the year, which is, uh, I thought, a wonderful idea from Stacy. And the nominations will be solicited through the town web, website. I never thought of that. I just said it. The website, it's also in the town paper. It's got out in Facebook now to three or four other things. So with that process, we've had uh, six nominations already. And uh, we're quite happy with the quality of the individuals. Any questions about that? Is that uh, what the council wanted to hear more specifically from me? Us? Uh, we'll get, well, I, I thought that we would probably see first to what all that is on on paper first and then see and then we can implement it before we get into doing nominations we should actually have that process decided on and then we can move forward with <coughs> nominations uh, after that well, okay. am I wrong when I say that no I think too late the process <laughs> You're okay. like we can, we can Okay, but we do need to work out the yeah. process. But is that is that what you guys council had in mind? Council, one or two of you had in mind for the process? Is that Sounds the right path? Okay, thank you. We can tighten that up a little, of course. 
But as you all well know, when I got the phone call, of, what are you doing? Uh, the it's out there. Okay, I think Councillor uh, Gloria had one question for okay. Councillor Mike. On your uh, your medical speech there, yep. um, you had, and I believe it was you, but it may have also been the chairman of the, or the uh, our member on the foundation was going to get us a report on how much the is in the doctor recruitment surplus that we have, and how much is left owing to people we've made commitments to. So, basically, a, a rundown of where we're at. A wonderful question. Uh, Mayor, Mayor Jacobson is on the committee and he's meeting with them tomorrow night. Hopefully, you can accept that. Did you just call him Mayor Mayor? Because <laughs> Mayor <laughs> Jacobson. <laughs> Mayor McMayor? I'm, I'm <laughs> the name now or what? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm hoping I'll get uh, all that information. Okay. Uh, greatly appreciate it because uh, that plays into my budget speech because uh, yeah. doctor recruitment has been growing. I, I, think, I think it's probably getting close to. Six hundred thousand, seven hundred thousand. I think it's closer to eight hundred thousand. So, all right. I still have. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, Councilor Morio right. had a question. Uh, just a comment on your medical speech, also, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's one of the things up there. Um, one of the avenues is like you're looking at, like we're getting reports and G four members going back to their councils and stuff like that. I think it's important to put out there that uh, this is potentially a business opportunity where someone, private enterprise, can construct and rent space to these individuals which from what i understand from the meeting is they're not against they're just looking for more space so they don't care who owns the building they is just that them as a practice don't want to own it um because they're not in a financial position to do it but they're more willing to pay rent to a landlord or for lack of a better word um for someone who's willing to build a huge facility and go that route so i'll add um, that to the so if there's, if there's someone in the community that's looking for an investment that could be long term. Well, I've asked uh, Mr. Poole to, I've added that to that list. Uh, when Mr. Poole thinks the office staff has time, they'll type this off and we'll send it out to the G4 for comments. And we would all get a copy of it. And I'll, I'll, I'll double check that I've got everything. I certainly just had a local contractor to build and or rent that facility to the local office. Because we actually suggested that they do it themselves. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll let uh, Councillor White have one more item on his uh, booklet there, and then I can let you. you well, I just want to make a quick comment on that comment as okay. far as maybe also let them know it might be easier for them to get private dollars than municipal dollars because I don't know if our push strings are going to be too open for uh, for anything else. So, yeah. Councillor Gray had it. This is the, almost the classic example of what I complained about at the first meeting. <coughs> this council passed a resolution approving a process and a plan which involved um, the construction of the pool. Four of you were there. The plan has an express building for the clinic to be built. Um, Help. We may not be able to do that, but but surely the first thing when somebody says we need more space, like I'm surprised that we allowed the process that went on to be there. But surely the process should be for us to look at the plan that we passed nine years ago, or eight years ago, to for the pool and for the full facility. Surely that's our first plan because that's a plan where over the course of 20 years. If you have a clinic here for 20 years and you have surgeons coming here, uh, oh, CAT scan and, and those kind of things, it will pay for itself for those 20 years. And so there shouldn't be actually net outlay from, from that. And we should be able to design what we want for the community, for the doctors, and for everybody. Now, that doesn't mean we should do that, but it means that should be our first step is deciding whether or not that's the process because that's the plan. The very next building for the pool is the clinic. And then the next one after that is, I think, the running track. And then the one after that's the pool, or the field house. Or maybe it's the field house and the clinic. I don't remember which. And then the, the, the arena. And, and here we are. And, and this is the lack of, that's why we need to have big plans where we say, this is what our big plan is. And, and that's going to come under. Anyway, that was the clinic. In terms of the other, um, 
there must be a, one of our standing committees must be the committee that we would use to send for the, for working out what the priority or what the process is. So I don't know which committee that is, but that that should go to the to a committee for development of a policy, whatever that is. It, it doesn't matter. We can go ahead with what is there. Just a, a word of a suggestion. Um, I like the idea that we would have a car for the parade in. Uh, Pass it over to be talking about. about your citizens of the year. Citizens of the year. Okay. Yeah. In the city of Pasadena, <coughs> they elect citizens of the year too, and they make them the marshal of the Rose Parade. Wouldn't it make sense to make these whoever our citizen is the marshal of the? That was mentioned. Yeah. yeah. I was just trying to give the crazy for them because I got lots more. Okay. <laughs> oh, I thought you were done. No, oh, sir. you're not done. No, sir. <laughs> okay, I'll give you one more minute. Come on, you got to give me the meetings I went to. Holy smokes. Uh, Councilor Morio and myself and Derek met with uh, Chief Fedorchuk and talked about and Councilor Lintoni met with uh, Chief Fedorchuk at length. And uh, as a consequence of that, uh, I've talked directly to the Reeve, whose name is Glenn Smith <coughs> in Livingston, in fact, today, and a very positive, happy man. I said, hey, if you don't want to several in both court as it were we'd like you to keep it we have some issues and our biggest issues we're not sure we can do the job appropriately for you it's not a money issue but we're concerned about that and he said well thank you for letting me know <laughs> first suggestion Calford. appreciate it he's going to look elsewhere for opportunities perhaps benito he said and pelle he said but he says he's not sure how that will go i've asked him to get back to me one way or the other to let me know so so he's done that and, and the bottom line that is it's not money to our chief it's the increased area of responsibility, which you guys all got the copies on your on your, on your uh, email today. Uh, money to go to expense, where he suggests he's 30% bigger geographically now in the last year or two with our commitments to rental development. So that's become an issue. Uh, contract is six months, so we haven't signed or cut anything off yet with, with him. He's going to look at it. I uh, would encourage my peers to add to that. Councillor Tony or Councillor Moore, you want to add anything to that? No, I, our biggest concern was to make sure that we had voice to voice contact or assurances that they did get the email going there that we're looking at that. And uh, we reaffirmed that uh, Chief of Orchard brought geographic maps that showed our geographic area and where our call volumes are and some of the city's concerns and stuff like that. So, that's happening, so we'll see where that goes. Okay. Then on the 10th, I went to the UCN uh, meeting where LP, Ride, the Enterprise Center, Chamber of Commerce, Swan Valley School Division, Hello, Paramount Health, Friendship Center, First Nation Co op, etc. <coughs> and what they're looking at is uh, trying to identify employment opportunities in the community and then structure UCN and or the Swan Valley School Division to train for those specific employment opportunities, which is a you know, quite a step. I kind of appreciate it. Not only for the present, for the future, for adults now, youth in the future. And uh, a couple of miscellaneous things they said that the bottom line, according to you, said is service. How all entities within the community service their, their customers, their patients. Their <coughs> so that's the biggest concern that that's not happening, be it a, a town council or a person working in a store. Another interesting point that I, I was going to challenge, and I'm not sure what I thought about, he says there are some local businesses that won't hire anybody right now unless if it's some previous work experience. So I said, well, how do you get the previous work experience? <coughs> Somebody's got to be first in line. So there was, a, and then another course I suspect our school might be offering it soon, just watching the, the superintendent of schools and the, the principal and Cam Matejka writing it down. There's a course in uh, on sustainable tourism. Well, you can do that from a money perspective and have sustainable and possibly it'll be offered here. Let me read. Well, the other thing I want to, I don't know if I shared this with you guys yet. The, uh, there's going to be 14 to 15 resident doctors. So these guys are in first or second year residency, and they'll be out in a year or two years to work. At the moment, there won't be any space here, it appears. And in the past, we've, uh, we, bought them, <coughs> we bought them lunch at the hospital. No, the hospital paid for it. But this, the uh, town, with the blessings of the CAO and mayor, 
stuck a little package together, a talent pin, a brochure, a map, what we're about, and I would encourage a note to the other, to keep the other team on learning from this guy, to keep the other CAOs and counselors on say, hey, we've got these docs coming in, would you like to put something in the little grab bag? And we'll go for lunch with them on February the 7th, myself or the mayor or Dave, who cares, and we'll bring a, a brief greeting, we've got five to 10 minutes at that, and then those resident doctors will be touring the community. And our, our obligation is 15 minutes, and I'm going to grab, grab back. That's it, and I want to thank uh, and Danny, because Tyler was getting it. The guys are getting those notes, they weren't reacting. I sent it to Rafiq, and when you want it done, please come. So you, uh, is that reasonable to, to uh, bring your greetings in a little package? But who puts the package together? Do you have staff that could do that? We don't have a lot of stuff to put in there. We have, we have uh, suppliers mean. things, but nothing with the town of Swan River, and we exhausted that years ago. Uh, a town pin, a couple of flyers, mm -hmm. the valley. Well, we have t like tins. I don't know if we have town, coffee cups. Town coffee cups? I don't know if we have any left. Yeah, I think there's a couple of them. Yeah, the has got like 15 yeah. people. Yeah. 15 people. Uh, Just and when did they come? February the 5th. February the 7th. Yeah. We'll find whatever we got. Yeah, that's all I can ask. So I'll stop over the day before I pick it up. And uh, Councilor Moore and I are the mayor. Uh, we're going to compliment with the mayor. I don't like to do that. Uh, <laughs> that's not fair. Anything. I do so. Uh, the mayor has shared with me that he, he thinks it's important, if I misquote you, please tell me, that we as councillors take the lead in some of those areas where we're managing or we're chairing it. The airport commission, you should be doing something to the airport or here in healthcare, in my case, in David's. And uh, he says, I don't have to go out and speak to all those places. He says, you may not have the time, by the way, but uh, I appreciate that and you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. That's everything. Right. Is there one tree there that you had or what? I, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Gray. I don't know how to fall back. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank Councilor Vintoni uh, for attending the um, Volunteer of the Year uh, ceremony uh, for me. Uh, I was obviously away. Um, and uh, I understand, Mayor, there was a meeting with the St. Peter's. Are you going to be reporting on that? Yeah. So I can read about that. Um, I have a couple of questions in due course. Uh, I, I met her today and, and we talked about the budget. I think the budget is going to be, um, and we'll have a debate in due course as possible. And I, um, because the budget will be whatever it will be. This is a bad year, uh, okay? It, it, just so everyone knows, so whoever's watching knows, this is a bad year. We have uh, pool problems, and, and one of the things is that we, uh, I think that report, there was a challenge from our, our uh, uh, from the consultants, they didn't particularly want us to release the agreement report. Uh, at least the conclusion should be released and available I'm suggesting that, so unless somebody in council suggests otherwise, and that's what I do this is Derek, we're going to release the, the conclusions, maybe not the rest of it for the moment, and we'll discuss it as a committee. But there are huge problems, um, and we are going to be doing an RF uh, request for proposals that involves uh, two streams. One is a longer term, if we look for a longer term fix, what that would look like, and the other is a more bandage approach, depending on what we're doing. Um, the secondary problem we have is that the, the pool, which <coughs> again we've already agreed as a council, it doesn't matter what we're doing with our lawsuit, we have to fix it. There, the air exchange system, the hot tub, there's about somewhere between 500000 and a million dollars worth of repairs that have to be done uh, this year. Um, there is going to be, I'm telling you, there is going to be an increase in, in taxes and there is going to be long-term commitments that are going to cause us stress. Everybody needs to know that we need to put that out, which brings me to the other thing. Mayor, um, the one element of criticism here, um, I apologize in advance, but uh, we have a communications committee, but we haven't been communicating very effectively on those kind of things, and we really need to develop that. Um, I suppose it's not the only one, there's a second one coming. But that's really a big deal for me, is that we have to get that stuff out. So people have to, it's fine to have it on our website, but people, we have to get press releases and stuff out so people understand that there are these issues coming. Because the worst thing we can do is surprise people with stuff. 
they like they won't be happy already. Like, nobody's going to be happy. I, Russ and Tony and I were particularly unhappy, as you will recall, when we first learned of these problems. But the public will accept them due course just as we have, because the reality is this is the situation we're in, and the choice with respect to the pool, the choice with respect to the arena is do you want a pool, do you want an arena, not whether we do these repairs. That's the reality. So we can talk all the time. I'm going to kind of not deal with some things that I have to do with them later. Um, I want to say, I, I came in today and I, I, how impressed I am with how our staff have dealt with the situation of not having CAO and, and we agreed before last meeting that we were going to deal with a contact for um, Derek and, and that and, and frame that. And so I want Mayor, if we go into our in-camera session to deal with that today because I think that's something that we need to deal with as a priority. Whatever we deal with in terms of hiring somebody into the future, that's less of a concern to me for today than making sure that we have that situation stabilized and a clear picture uh, for Derek and for the rest of the staff. Which brings me, I was going to talk about use of council and pride was and rise, although I think we have a meeting coming up on rise and I think it has real challenges. You will, I, I told every one of you, I think, or if I haven't, I'm telling you now, there's a thing called Portage Online which talks about all the things that Portage has done with their actors, not just economical, but a bunch of things. They've had $1.8 billion, billion investment in the last few years. And they keep announcing mm -hmm. shit. And you go, oh, great. That's where we want to be, not where we are. In any event, which brings me to the last thing. I do not believe we can wait until we have a CAO hired enough and running to begin the process of strategic planning. Whether or not that's a full strategic plan or not, I am suggesting, Mr. Mayor, that we need to have a retreat with senior personnel, with all of the councillors, and spend a day or two talking about where we want to go. Because there are two clear paths for this community. One is to say we're going to be a flourishing community that's going to be developing, having economic development and economic <laughs> opportunities, and increased opportunities like maybe in the arena and different things, and that will involve the entirety of this community, which involves all of the outside municipalities, or we can remain stagnant. Those are, but, but we have to make a choice, we have to decide if we have critical mass enough to go forward with the flourishing idea, are we prepared to meet the investments that are necessary, and those things need, because <coughs> our decision on the arena, for instance, will be driven, or should be driven, by that bigger picture of what our community would look like generally. I know where I sit on that, or what I want to fight for. But at the end of the day, every decision comes with consequences. And the decision to say we're going to be a flourishing community means we have to provide these investments. And if we're not providing those investments, the reality is we will by default make the decision to be a stagnant community. And so, I, Mr. Mayor, I'm asking you to figure out when you want to do that. but. We should do a retreat on it and get everybody together and start this process. Because if we don't, we'll be May or June for a CAO. If we're up and functioning, it'll be the fall, and we'll have used a year of our four year term before we even get to that point, and we'll be behind the eight ball forever. And we keep losing critical mass. Um, I don't think there's, there were other things I wanted to say, but um, Councillor. White used up all of the available oxygen in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I want to defer all of the rest of my comments until um, another time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You can say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, but I, uh, we could have still given you a little bit more time. So. All right, so uh, for me, <clears throat> um, uh, I've actually spoken uh, in regards to the Indigenous Relations Committee. I spoke with Chief Nelson and I actually in length the other day, and uh, actually, ironically, he's in Ottawa. So uh, we had a good chat, and uh, he's very open to having these uh, further discussions uh, with the community that also involve all our First Nations <coughs> and Métis people. So it's very encouraging, and, and actually, he brought up a few uh, good things that he thinks that we need to be working on together. So I believe that um, uh, with with the thinking of uh, Chief Janai, he's very progressive, and I think that he's willing to be a good uh, person at the table with us. 
I did reach out to Chief Zaster, and he's gonna uh, chat with me tomorrow, actually. And Chief uh, Baston, uh, she will, uh, she hasn't got back to me. I did reach out to her, but I haven't heard back from her, so I'm sure in the next few days uh, I'll hear from, uh, from her as well. Um, Councillor Delory and I did have a chance to go and speak with the St. Peter's uh, executive. Uh, I think they had about maybe six there and just an informal discussion about the arena and they want basically an update of what um, you know what the issues were you know what, what the rumors were and, and so we filled them out we filled them in on um, all the information that we could provide to them as far as the fixes and stuff like that and we couldn't really give them any detail on that because obviously like Councillor Gray says we're, we have a process that we're looking at right now to see what that might look like so they were very informed about it for what the information that we could provide them, but uh, I told them that we would keep them informed as, as we move ahead, but to keep in mind of the, you know, we gotta make sure that the brine is filled in that tank, you know, and feeding that, uh, that uh, ice plant uh, for the next, you know, couple months, especially since we have such a, a good team there happening right now. Um, over the weekend, we had some. I actually had some calls that uh, in some of our river flats areas that uh, there was coyotes coming closer into town. Uh, there was, uh, I guess, one area of town where I think that a neighbor or somebody resident had piles of garbage piled up, and these coyotes have been attracted to this garbage, obviously. So uh, I believe that. The bio officer has been dealing with that today or yesterday to get them to get this garbage cleaned up. But uh, there also was some sighting here yesterday of coyotes also in the Legion Park. I did speak with conservation, <coughs> Jeff Burmet, and uh, Jeff uh, has um, provided information to the to the town, which we'll post on our webpage on on you know uh, how to deal with coyotes and all that. They're also going to put some signs. Uh, Conservation is going to put some signs in the park just so we keep people aware that these uh, these animals are could be lingering around there. Uh, so I don't think it's anything to start panicking about, but just to keep vigilant and keep an eye on your small pets and stuff like that. I would have to think, but uh, for the most part, of people keep the garbage cleaned up or keep them covered and don't let these animals come and forage on that. Then I think that we could probably keep them away. And uh, also, I spoke with the superintendent of the school division last night, and we talked about it as well. And conservation also has given them information and forwarded so that they can uh, give that information out to the to the parents and to um, um, the kids and so forth. Um, tomorrow night, I guess I'll have my anointment at Swan Valley Health Foundation. So. Um, I'm sure that would be a long meeting. I think there's three noon out of, out of the four. So uh, uh, we'll see how that goes, but definitely there'll be information that I'll be looking for as far as uh, what commitments have been made, what kind of money is sitting in reserves, and, uh, and what plans were, that were you know, being made for that. I understand that there's two different types of money sitting there too, but I, I'll get all that information and I'll share that uh, and any other information people council wants to, to hear so other than that I think that's it for my report besides what was already repeated as far as general government finance and working on some of those new policies and I thank uh, Mr. Bouvier for his time that he has spent on on getting that We're going from a, a very small document uh, to a, a fairly large one and I think it's the, the step in the right direction and, and I thank you for taking the time to helping us to get that developed. Um, so I'll move on with uh, Mr. Poole if he has anything to report. Uh, just to keep short, <coughs> in addition to what or the small amount of information I've written down in my report on the agenda, I just have two items. One is Deputy Mayor Wintoni. I haven't forgot to schedule a meeting. It will happen. <laughs> no problem. I understand. Two is just to let Council know that the budget presentation is uh, I know you're all thinking about it in ANSI and it seems like it's going to be late this year, which it will be compared to 19. We're going to spend a lot of time in 2019 on budgets at the start and the end of the year. But uh, uh, 
I just you know let you guys know that the presentation will be informative. It'll be the start of our solution, but it won't be the solution. And yeah, I will be recommending what I believe is a responsible budget, but obviously you'll have to say. I know it's it's anticipated, but it's coming. We are tentative date is going to be January 29th. So that's a Tuesday. I have yet to I say I have confirmed that a solid confirmation from Terry that that, that, that date is okay, uh, I still have to get. So that is a little subject to change. I guess if I could just squeeze in for the uh, environmental, or the utility committee, uh, February 12th, I would like to schedule AE to come uh, and present basically a, a small presentation on the lagoon and the regulations that we have to meet, the challenges small communities are having, that's basically an informative uh, presentation that AE will give to us at no cost just to get our committee and any other councillor obviously is invited to, to come and, and learn and, and see the reasons why we're doing, <coughs> what we're doing with that lagoon project and then obviously an update on process and that is February 12th. That one is a more solid date. What date? Twelfth, I believe, is again is a Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? Yeah. And I will email Times. Yeah. Thank you. I was just going to say, can you email that and the Times, please? Yeah. Thanks. How, how soon will you be able to solidify the 29th? I'm hoping this week. Yeah. Yeah, we've got to get going. It's, it, yeah. it's as late as we can go for yeah. mm -hmm. okay. it, it doesn't have to be perfect the first time we see it. Right. What was the, what was the community relative to the lagoon? February 12th. That one will probably be early, early evening, late afternoon. Yeah. Okay. We'll just send out a reminder of times and all that. Yeah. Is that it? That's it. Okay. Mr. Moody, do you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I wanted to do a written report, and I will. Okay. Uh, I had all my notes in my journal of my 2018, which I left at home. Oh. But I will draft uh, a report for the next meeting before I leave. And uh, one thing I'd like to do is also make, make some suggestions, recommendations of what I kind of observed here in the last month and a half. For your review and observation more than anything, uh, I find it interesting when I look at different municipalities, how things are done, and they're done somewhat differently all over the place. But we did make some little changes, which uh, uh, just tonight, noticing that you're not signing resolutions anymore, to me, that's a big And it's not because we were late, I think it's what we're, we're proposing to do from now on, right? Uh, not having to pass these papers around. Most municipalities aren't doing that anymore. So uh, I'm kind of glad that little things like that are being done. It's not big, but. Uh, so I made a lot of notes tonight that I want to do, like recommendations, suggestions. Uh, one quick thing while I have a I know we're kind of running behind, but uh, I was looking at all the <coughs> meetings for this year, and your meetings are always on the first Tuesday of every month, which always seems to follow a long weekend. There's six of them this year that are, your regular meeting is on a long weekend. For example, uh, even uh, the first meeting of the year was on January 2nd. And I noticed that that makes it pretty difficult for staff and maybe even sometimes yourself if the office is closed the day before a meeting. Uh, you know, it, it's something for consideration. A lot of municipalities have their meetings on different days or second and fourth versus first and third. There's little things like that that sometimes not a big change, but it makes it a lot easier for, for uh, just for proper meetings to be held. You know? uh, the other one which I want to mention was I noticed uh, email today from the AMM regarding the municipal uh, official seminar in March uh, is on the same day as your council meeting. There's the mayor's and the CAO's meeting, and the next two days is the AM, uh, municipal uh, official seminar and the trade show. I think it's in one day. Is it one day? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, no, it's Brandon. Is it Brandon? Brandon. Still, uh, yeah. still a still yeah, yeah. yeah. So these are things that you have to think of several months ahead because if you have public hearings coming up uh, and you're planning on going and you'll know better than I know if you're planning on going then these dates should be looked at. Uh, you can look at that. 
I don't know if you if you usually go to those things. But, uh, well, the the mayor and the CEO yeah, had the think pass think. on yeah. the first day because when there was the mayor and CEO meetings yeah. that were happening there. And the other one is the other one is more training than anything. It's right. not like the convention. It's no, a no seminar. But uh, I just noticed that today. But so if you if it's okay with council, that's what I plan to do. Little things like that that I have observed. Uh, <coughs> little comments and just for your your observation. Uh, absolutely, we welcome anything that yeah. you can provide to us. That's, that's good. Yeah. yeah. And you know, uh, I know that it's this is your. Last yes, my last meeting already. We'll, we'll, we'll have you back and up, but yeah. but I'm just going to say on behalf of council, to thank you for coming and spending the time, you know, the last month and a little bit uh, to help assist Mr. Poole and our rest of our administration, and uh, kind of get us somewhat on our feet and, and get us on the right track. And I think you've done a, a good job. All right, so we'll move on to item 8.1. Be resolved that the town of Swan River provide the arm of Livingston, Saskatchewan, with the required six months notice to cancel said fire service agreement. Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Now you, you have. Because of the uh, past discussion, you can say that you want to table this, or you can uh, defeat this. We can't this. table this motion, but yeah, I have to have a motion for to table it. But but I think that the motion, uh, and I, I'm a little uncomfortable speaking to a motion before it's a motion. But but so can I have a second to that? I'll second. Okay, Council Moyo. Okay, discussion. Uh, <coughs> I think Greg. that the motion is premature. I think until we know exactly where we're headed. And, and candidly, I thought the last time we talked, we talked about the fact that we were going to use this as a sort of an example or an opportunity to try and negotiate a different kind of agreement. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that that was our model. And the model was for all of the municipalities that, that really we no longer can provide. If people want us to provide them service where we're just on an on call service, then the on call numbers are going to go significantly up. And, and that's not really the model we want. But the model we want is a quality <coughs> fire protection service because we're effectively providing fire protection service for everywhere. And we should say to everyone, we all need to contribute an equal, reasonable share of the cost of operation and operate. That that's the model, not some model where we bill you under what it's costing us to deliver that. Because the cost of delivery isn't, we have to figure out what the cost of a fire truck, which was $600,000 or something, um, or more, and more. Um, you know, the cost of going to a fire isn't the cost of sending a five-ton grain truck out to a field. It's $5,000 an hour, $10,000 an hour, whatever it is. And, and, and we need to have those contributions and, and with Livingston, if we can work that out, we can work out that with other people. That's a model, it's a better solution for us. <coughs> I agree. And so until we exhausted that and gone through that whole process, I feel uncomfortable going ahead with it. Secondly, that's one part of it. It's a, it's a good opportunity for low risk for us to go into that negotiation. Um, the second thing is that that's a more that that area is an area that's right for us to be part of our area. They really have no other logical area to belong to. So, and and while they will go to York and as people from here go to York and for some stuff, if we can make this a logical connector, I think we're, we help ourselves in the long run. So for me, I think that the motion is premature. Councilor with Tony, I guess <clears throat> in having the conversations with. Mr. Fedorchik in regards to that, and I and I agree with with <coughs> what uh, Councillor Gray talks about, um, but I think I'm under the impression from Mr. Fedorchik that no matter what the cost is or the amount of money that is negotiated for fire protection, that it's not feasible for our fire department to maintain that without sacrificing our own area and in terms of geological areas and the commitments that we've that we've signed on with um, 
Bozeman Birch River <coughs> to provide service to them in the event that our department was called out to there, we wouldn't be fulfilling our agreements that we have in our town or the um, shared agreements that we have with the other municipalities. So in that regard, I don't think that it comes down to, it. let me rephrase that upon his recommendation, has nothing to do with the amount of dollars. Um, it, it, it wouldn't matter what the dollar rate would be that they would accept. It's just not feasible for our fire department to be stretched to such a length and neglect our own our own um, fulfillment requirements that we have here. I, I do think, though, that this uh, agreement might be premature and that we need to ensure that they have something because it would not be wise just to ensure that they have nothing at all. Um, so for that reason, I think that the, um, the agreement is, pre is premature. Uh, so when you spoke to the uh, Reeve Council, wait, did he say that he was about fine with, with ceasing the agreement, or he said wait until we make alternate arrangements, or, or what was the well, His, his <coughs> preference was for us to wait until they had made alternate arrangements. He, he, he understood our situation. He appreciated our situation. Very, very pleasant to talk with. He's, he asked if we be able. Are they part of us? I said no. He said, hopefully, if you can set up a deal with Benito and or Kelly. And I said, well, before anything happens, just try that out and, and let us know. Councilor Moran. Um, just building on what Councilor Tony had meant, and talked about and stuff like that, um, I think it, everybody's in agreement that we would like to offer fire services to the yard with these students, but uh, it could come at a cost um, to the quality and level of service that within our own primary boundaries. Um, as Chief Dorchuk had mentioned, is that what if if our department's out in the arm of Lins, Livingston putting out a fire under a contract with them in the event that if there is an incident in our primary response where another department would come in, it would be at our bill, would not fall under the mutual aid agreements. So we would be paying full rates from that department to come and do the work, say for in the town of Swan River. Um, he also mentioned that um, based on like on the like there's 20 some houses out there that we do cover and the distance out there that uh, there wouldn't be much to save once they got there anyway. The reef said that to me too. That uh, um, with new house construction we, we know firsthand from a previous fire down ditch road um, how fast those homes go up. Um, so the, the primarily uh, it would be grass fires and incidences that um, rescue incidents that they could potentially be used for, but for like house fires or building fires, things like that, there wouldn't be a whole lot of structure for them to actually save versus just containing it. Um, so it's, uh, as Chief of North Chicken, uh, when we talked at the committee, it's that it, it had nothing to do with dollars and cents they could offer, they could, they could offer the world. Um, the department, the fire department's concern here is that they um, want to offer the, the service that they're committed to to our primary response area first. As um, looking at the maps of when the uh, agreement was first drawn up, um, it, it outlined our geographic area and then overlaying our new geographic <coughs> area for primary response, it has grown significantly. And then <laughs> subsequent maps show where the incidences are occurring and all our incidences are within the town and proceeding east of us. So, um, there was more discussion there, but just we need to have all the information on the, on the table and stuff like that and uh, um, we'll go from there. Okay. So. Further discussion? All in favor? Of the favor of what? Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, oh, I didn't read the resolution. She's, okay. Um, sorry. <clears throat> Be it resolved the town of Swan River provide the RM of Livingston, Saskatchewan, with the required six months notice to cancel the said fire service agreement. I had a move by Councilor Friesen and a second by Councilor Morio. I moved to table that to um, 
afternoon suggests the second meeting in February. Okay. Does the move for a second or agree? Okay. So February second. Second meeting. That would be. Oh no. Second. <coughs> second. Second meeting. Second meeting. Nineteenth. Okay. Nineteenth. Okay. Can uh, Councilor Wick, can you get a hold of the brief prior to that meeting and see if they've made alternate arrangements? He said he'd pull me back, but okay. if he does, like I said, he can pull him in. Yeah, yeah, they've, they've got a reason to their app, yeah, but, but I do think we need to explore the other piece anyway. Okay. <coughs> and they'll give plenty of time to, uh, to do that, so. We resolved at the variation of order application number five, 2018 by Buddy the Lady to allow an addition to the main building, one foot seven inch from the property line instead of the four feet zero inch minimum zoning requirement be approved. Moved by. Anybody? Councilor, Councilor Delorier, seconded by. Second. Councilor Friesen. Discussion. I would. I would be putting <coughs> in the conditions uh, as suggested by our fire chief with the non-combustible materials, along with uh, with Councilor Gray had suggested that uh, they need to outline how they're going to remediate the neighbors' concerns. <coughs> of snow, not snow, snow, garbage, everything, stuff like that. Like that, that's recently the third thing, wasn't it? That's the live on this resolution here. Yeah. No, um, but there was a third thing. There was, there was three things that we mentioned before. Um, remediate the problems. Mr. Poole had recommended a, a, f a fence yes. of some sort. Close the Closing the ends. Maybe that was in fact another camera member. Sorry. We had the discussion before. Council delay. On the recommendation of closing in the ends, what is closing in the length of it? Because right now it's open to a parking lot, correct? It was if, it, if there was another building built up. Yeah, oh. in the case that there was a building. Okay, so, <coughs> so, so how, how does how does that get brought forward in history 20 years from now when a building gets built? How does that get triggered? Uh, how do you do that with a... <laughs> yeah, that would be tough. I have, but it would have to be a, a... There would have to be, a, I don't know, a condition on a legal property, I don't know. I'd have to talk to a lawyer to see if that can even be done. And just to confirm that this isn't an addition, it's a shed that's being put. No, it's an addition. An addition. That was the change that we did not have to advertise on the Republic hearing as long as we let the objector know. <coughs> Further discussion? There's a, there's a third condition and I can't remember what it is. Sure. Go ahead, Mr. Well, I, mean, I just noticed in the comments of the fire chief, I guess it talks about a monitor to really work in system. Yeah, well, that, all of the well, fire chief's recommendations of have to be um, addressed. Right. Yeah, but the remediation has to be addressed. And we were three things. We... You remember? Uh, I thought I thought the snow item was one, and and the the other two that you mentioned was that. That's all I remember. It's yeah. like snow and garbage, and then the fire. Chief's recommendations. So how, how do we add those conditions in there? I guess if it's a resolution, you can add it to the resolution as long as the mover and the seconder uh, approve the amendment to the resolution. Yeah, but with the specific wording. Well, it's, that would have to be what? <clears throat> I think it should be tabled until the proper wording is put in place. For this. Okay. That'll give me time to think of the first thing. Alright. <laughs> so then right. does the mover and the seconder, I can remember who they were, uh, Councillor Delorier and Councillor 
reason. Yeah, I'll table it. Okay, so we'll table it till, till, next, till next meeting. And so the resolution that will come back will have, Derek, can you include conditions of, of uh, the combustible wall <coughs> that the chief recommends? And then specifically, what kind of snow remediation will there will be? Well, they have to have a snow remediation, a dirt remediation plan uh, that is acceptable to them. So, so are we asking him to present a plan of how he is going to remediate the situation, or are we just going to have a resolution explaining the conditions of what he has to do in order to get this variance? So, normally we always just had the conditions of what he had to do. So, are we telling him that he has to just make his neighbors happy, or do we have to plow snow once a week, or what would be a condition for snow removal? The condition is that he has to, um, it's up to him to present a plan that's acceptable to us that says, that's one of the reasons for the He has to present a plan that's acceptable to us that shows how he's going to ensure there's no encroachment on his neighbor's property. Okay. Yep. What was the concern with the Elks, not necessarily to do with snow coming off a building or something like that, but more like, they were concerned about that they didn't have a place to put snow. It was from the, their, I, their concern was when they were pushing, yeah. they were going to push up against it was, this building. It was not actually down. snow coming off a building because a business, you can oh, be right. neighboring about, and you can't control yeah. where snow is going, right? But it was more of a concern about that they could no longer put their snow yeah. on the neighbor's property anymore. That was a concern. So to me, I don't even think that's an really? issue. You should, yeah. yeah. You should, you're, yeah, when when uh, I I, I, I thought it was about about the fact that they needed to clear the parking lot and there was going to be extra cost for them. That's what I understand. Yeah. They were no, really there's no on his property. Yeah. Yes. Well, because now they won't be so they, they, have, they won't be able to push as far because they'll end up pushing snow into the building. Right. <laughs> so I I don't think if we go back to that conversation from the representative no, no. from the Elks, I don't think that's an issue that we have to be concerned about. Yeah, but it was the Elks that were having to issue of the snow from the back of his building <coughs> from the, the, the applicant here of their snow coming on the, their property correct not not the parking lot of the elks going on the applicant's property it was two different thoughts happening here yes so, it yeah. is it's, which is it because we had yeah we had the the elks representative here there was no there was no no, but applicant here. But they were saying, and I think when they, when you said it, it reminded me that they were they were talking about pushing snow or something. Yeah, it, was and it, it was the push snow it. from the back of the on the east side of the building. As they clean the push, they would push it up, and then we get into the Elks parking lot, which would reduce their space. I think we should get it back. Talk to get who the Elks, whoever wants. Well, she she to be be here. Like Wait, but this is the public hearing. Tonight was the opportunity. Nobody okay. showed. Well, we just put the, the, we we the condition know. on it that the snow on, on that property stays on their property. Is, is, is that a thing? If, if we we can, how can we afford that? that? Yeah. Snow blows off my roof yeah. onto my neighbor's property all the, all the time. Yeah. We don't control where the yeah. snow goes. Well, it might, I guess it's two different well, issues. No. But, but the issue here is that you're building it closer to the property. So. Normally, if you're a few feet, but we, we allow you to build right to the property line, which is bizarre. So, <laughs> but the, the but snow the can't snow. be an issue. Yeah. But the snow, the snow, snow blowing onto the neighbor's property can't be an issue because he, he he could not have, he could build to the property line, have not applied for a variance, and we'd have no say about where the snow went. But the snow it's a different it, like the snow from the parking lot has nothing to do with the variance of a building. That's two separate issues. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, like for for the various purposes, that the the snow from the back parking lot of where they push it is not part of this various process. So that is that is an issue that we had when we first objected was, you know, we don't put your snow somewhere else like that. Like I don't, we didn't understand. I guess well, he's not letting me put the snow where he's going to build his building. Like we, well, that becomes yeah. a bylaw issue of where people put their snow on the wrong property. All I can. I just don't think that that's a conversation that we need to have constantly. I'd be willing to deal with the resolution tonight. Uh, we've, we've had two public hearings. One person showed up to vote. 
Um, let's deal with the resolution tonight. I'd be willing to uh, put the condition on it of, of building a, not, a non combustible wall of, as the fire chief had recommended or any other recommendations that the fire chief had. You can just take this like as recommended, uh, as recommended by the fire chief, and then the thing. Yeah. So. Okay. You can add the details of that then. So we are still tabling, or are we dealing with this? Uh, I'm I'm willing to deal with it right now. We've we've had two public hearings for people to come. That was people's opportunity. Yes. Okay. So so I can I would say amend it so that it is there, with the. Uh, <coughs> building with the additional use of non-combustible materials for the roof and cladding where possible to limit fire or potential fire spread to the adjoining property also including that the new and existing structures have monitored early warning fire installed if one doesn't exist i agree with all that except i would take out the word possible i, I don't think it's an option it's all got to be non-combustible materials because it's going to be close to a property line. Yes. Yeah, I agree. And I guess, and then if you're right about the uh, snow, then there is no issue. And I don't know if you have So we well, can amend, amend the resolution. We then? could amend the resolution. Mm -hmm. So the mover and mm -hmm. the seconder agree to the amendment. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then, um, I'll ask the question if there's any other further discussion. We should take the resolution. The amended resolution, can Derek can write it up while we do with the. Okay, well, you can uh, rewrite that or add the amendment, then we'll just move on to the next item. Okay. okay, so uh, 9.1. <clears throat> Be resolved that the accounts as follows by hereby approve the payment. General accounts number 23,734, number 23,793, for a total of 251,414 and 15 cents. <coughs> Payroll account checks number 4376 to number 4381, for a total of 105,632 and 64 cents. Moved by Councilor Gray, seconded by Councilor Tony. Discussion. I guess we have to wait for Mr. Pinnell to finish writing. There's no discussion. There's no discussion. Okay. All in favor? It's carried. I wrote down most of it. There's all the bylaw. 9-2018 organizational bylaw be read a third time as amended. This uh, moved by. Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? <coughs> this yeah, was, that's a recorded vote. This was a recorded vote. <coughs> Resolve that bylaw number 10 of 2018, the procedural, be read a third time as amended. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Delorier. It's a recorded vote. Discussion? All in favor? Sorry, Councillor Gray, you have a question. Sorry. Well, there were some things that I thought we agreed that weren't, that aren't in here, but we can cover them again. We're going to continue to work on this bylaw, right? Yeah. 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 That, I, that I don't care. It's better than it was, and we've got a couple of questions that we want to talk about. Uh, Mr. Uh, well, uh, there was a few changes made uh, under section, some corrections under section 13, and then we also had under 13.6 the um, kind of single meeting for each bylaw. Oh, yeah. oh that, was, that was, yeah, yeah. The 13.6. Yeah, that's yeah. so basically saying how to have your second meeting, uh, a full copy has to be provided to everybody. Yeah. So, I'll ask the question. All in favor? Okay. 
We resolved that bylaw number 11, 2018, Council Indemnity, and we read a third time. Moved by Councilor Gray, seconded by Councilor White. Nobody's really moving on this. <laughs> Discussion, recorded vote, uh, Councilor Moyer. I'll just renew my views of what I preached on the last other meetings that. Uh, <coughs> Some dollars with the stuff there that uh, I read in the past and could be spent it. So, uh, you've heard my speech uh, before. So. Okay. For the further discussion, recorded vote, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Through a counselor out, that he indicated that they had been voted for something because I'm hoping that this is balanced. But they didn't, the way they calculated, they actually gave themselves an increase. But we were assuming that this is revenue. Okay, so uh, moving by Councilor Gray, resolved that variation order application number 5, 2018, by Buddy the Lady to allow. In addition to the main building, one foot seven inch from the property line instead of the four feet zero inch minimum requ uh, zoning requirement be approved. Uh, further, uh, with the conditions that the addition <coughs> use non combustible materials for roof and cladding to limit potential fire hazards, also existing structures install a monitor early warning system fire if one does not exist. Moved by. Council Memorial, seconded by Councilor Gloria. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Be it resolved that the Town of Swan River Bylaw No. 1, 2019, to its by amend its Bylaw No. 2, 2018, which provided for the expenditure of borrowing of money for the installation of curved gutter and asphalt pavement the 300 block of 12th Avenue South and the 1200 and 1300 block of 3rd Street South as a local improvement be read a second time. Moved by Councilor Morial, seconded by Councilor Gray. Discussion? Um, Councilor Gray, all in favor? Okay. We resolve the council dissolve in dissolve into a committee as a whole council in a closed in camera session at 10 13 p.m. Moved by Councillor Montoni, seconded by Council Morio. Discussion? Yeah, but we want to camera for it. Uh, we are going into the camera with uh Council Ray and uh Oh, yes. All in favor? Opposed? 